at least sometimes the tech won't work in your favour. Uh, so I've got the phone here from Facebook and when we go to the panel situation, I will actually just turn my phone around and bring everyone in through that way as well. So for those of you joining me on Facebook, hi everyone. The live stream technology from Zoom and Facebook is not talking this morning and that most probably comes down to the fact that um, we have so much happening in the world of social media right now. For those of you who aren't are here live in the Zoom session, thank you for joining us. There is a little bit more room in the Zoom room here at the moment. Currently, we've got 19 participants. Clive, if you could go and grab that invite link down the bottom and put it in the Facebook Live. For those watching the Facebook Live, they can come over to Zoom and ask me questions directly and they get to participate with the panel if we can do that one as well. That would be great this morning. Um, we have an amazing day. Um, not amazing day. We have an amazing lineup of people that are coming to help you here this morning. In addition to myself here talking, um, with you all about how to run workshops and things online. Uh, we have gone through an amazing, uh, Anita says she's glad it's not just her with these problems. I'm glad that I can make you feel better about technology glitches this morning. It makes me feel better that I make everyone feel, feel better about that one. Um, today's session, Clive, can I get you to turn your video off please? You're just taking just a little bit of the stream from this end. I'm getting a weak connection. I don't know if I can turn this video off. Have I paused guys? Can you hear me? Yep, Clive, you're frozen. Please turn your video off. He's, he's completely frozen. It's not the best face for him. He's doing apologies for that, guys. Okay, so where we are this morning is we are literally going to talk about how to take your workshops and those online. For those of you who know me, I'm a publicist, I'm a marketing consultant, and I love teaching other business owners what I do. I'm also the founder of the community that you know and trust as business, business, business. And um, Friday afternoon, our world changed here. We had events cancel, we had restaurants cancel, we had so lots of people lose their income and this is what today's session is all about. This session today is to help you navigate the changing world of business. Now, the exciting thing that I will announce and I'm likely to, to drag some people in, like Omar sitting right beside me there, is the uh, Clive and I have in, talked to the team and we've worked out, we we're actually gonna run a dedicated, like our Small Business Skills Summit, but a dedicated summit on navigating business, uh, which will be the navigating the changing landscape of business. Give us a couple of days, we'll hopefully have that live Monday next week. Now today, what are we gonna cover? Okay, so there is lots of tech, there's lots of tools, there's lots of planning and preparation that you need to go through through this process. I didn't put together a PowerPoint presentation because I thought the best thing I can do as a leader of the community is actually talk to you face to face here and now. And hi, Facebook people, I've got to forget, I've got to have to remember that you're over there as well, thanks to the technical glitches. And I'm sure Clive will talk to you about where we sit with those things. Um, if you want to jump to the Zoom session, go to the events tab and join us live, it will help there. So when we run, online workshops and events. And I know it was about four and a half years ago that I actually had to make the move from running face-to-face -face workshops to actually coming to deliver content online. And the biggest problem for me was that they're not, they're not in the workspace and the technology, and that has come a lot more further. We can have conversations like we are right now. We can have other conversations and we can really develop and, and move forward. But there are some key factors which are the same as every other event that you run that need you through this process. There's planning and preparation. So we actually need to plan. We need to know where things are going. There is all um, things such as um, tools and getting the right tech that's right for your business. So there is tech and even in here in the office, and I'm just putting a li list of the stuff that we're gonna look at today in the plan, getting the tech that's right for your business. Good communication with your people. Um, keeping track, promotion, you need to promote these online places just because you build it. They will not come. They just don't come. You've actually got to, you know, build, build your, and share the information that you're going to share over the next little while. Um, and then we're going to um, go into the, the production and, and the delivery of it. There is a massive list of tools that we have put together and my, my team is literally most probably still editing that post because there was glitches all over the place with, with text and font layouts and those sorts of things. Hey Rob, thank you for joining us this morning. One of the key things about running online events is get water. Uh, make sure that you have water so that when your voice goes crank, croaky as it will throughout this period of time. So Rob's joining us as well. Um, we will bring the panel in at 11. I just want to cover the how-to stuff to begin right now, but thank you. Oh, I want your t-shirt. <laughs> it's where I stand this morning. Okay. So, so uh, Rob, have you met Omar before? 
I'm asking my brother. No, Joe. but we have met now. Hey, Omar. <laughs> hey, Rob. Great to meet you, man. Good to meet you. It's going to be a panel of introductions this morning. It, it, yeah. It, and guys, thank you so much for, for coming to, together with us today to do this. Um, for those of you who are watching the live stream, if you feel like you would like to share this to other people, please do. And um, Clive, uh, as an American, the way to slow down the audio, I will try and slow down for you. I talk fast. It's what I do. It's how I am. <laughs> you will get a replay that you can watch in and slow down if you want to slow me down later. Uh, but I, I get I get that one. Um, I'll try and slow down for you guys today. Okay. Um, Let's start from the start and I'm going to send you, take you off now and there will be a replay of all of the session today. Um, it'll just take the time of the regional internet to process for us to be able to get you that one. Okay, so the first thing is when we're going to doing this, um, when we're going to go through this process here is I actually want you to step back right now and have a conversation with your client. Okay, where we sit right now is nothing other than uncharted territories. We're not exactly sure if we're going to move things online if we're running face to face workshops. So for someone like myself, who runs workshops in smaller groups, and my my 10 working days, I've spoken to my students and I've said, what would you like me to do? Um, it was easy to pick up the phone to, to seven students and say, what would you like me to do? And then, you know, if the extras come in, that's great. But I did, I spoke to them and I said, what would you like me to do? Now you can poll your students to do the same thing. You can poll, poll those attendees that you are. We have some government restrictions, obviously. We can't put more than 100 people in a room. You know, that's not, not great anymore. Um, and we can't put, you know, more than 500 people in an outdoor venue. And that did cause a lot of problems on Friday for us here. Um, in Australia in particular, we, we were, lots of people were going, oh my God, what do we do now? Um, the process of them moving online after you've spoken to your students is to start to work out what's going to work right for you. Now, fortunately for me, um, we have tools like Zoom and Webinar Ninja and Thinkific and TubeBuddy in our, in our list, but it's taken me five or six years of researching all of those tools to put that list together for us to be able to say, here's what you can have a look at and use. And that's what we will go through today. Um, guys, on the Facebook live stream, I will actually see if I can pop this in myself because um, I've got the Facebook page open here. Um, I'm just going to pop the tools and the list in for you today because I'm going to take you off to some tools pages and that in a moment. We've put together a big list of tools to help you throughout the process. Um, and the other thing that we need to look at when we're going through this is actually finding the right technology for our businesses because finding that just going with a random technology um, means that you may not be getting the right technology for your business throughout the process. So we need to find the technology that's right for you. And as I said, we use different technology here in the business for different needs. Um, you know, I love all of my um, technology situations from here. Um, if you're watching the Facebook live stream, and you think someone would benefit from this one, please, by all means, share the live stream. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take you off through the tool list, through the planning situation, and I'm going to screen share now. So I'm actually going to turn my video off just in case the regional internet decides it wants to eat all of my video. Um, I'm going to stop my video for a moment and I'm going to screen share and take you through my area there. Um, okay, by all means, guys, in the chat club, if there's anything you need me to look at, that'd be great. While we're going through this process, we're going to have the panel session at the end where we will take questions. Please use the Q&A tab to put those questions in there. If you're watching the live stream, Clive will move them across to, to the Q&A for us throughout the process as well. Okay. So you don't need to see my Facebook page. What we need to do is we need to be looking at this running workshops and meetings and events virtually toolkit. So this is my toolkit for running workshops, meetings and events. One of the first things that I would say to you when we go through this is we need to plan and prepare. And I'm actually going to scroll right down past the virtual kits and all of those sorts of things through to some planning and preparation tools that we use throughout the process. Now, one of the tools that I've given you through today's process as well in that toolkit is our course creators planning board on Trello. Um, now it's not perfect for running live workshops and those sorts of things, but it's going to help you put together a course, course plan and, and sales pages and all of those sorts of things. So how to create a copy of the board is there because you'll need to create a copy of the board to run the template. The sales landing pages are there as well. And I know I need to turn you around 
turn their phone around to the Facebook people uh, to see, and that one's there as well. Facebook guys, I will put your re the replay up after I've done the screen share and we'll come back to most of the calendar over the little while. I just wanna run people through these tools and then we'll be back on screen for you. Um, the tools that we've got there inside the board, and I've got to hit the back button because that's technology for you. Um, the tools that we've got in there at the moment are here to help you help you get through the process. Um, go to webinar live who are joining us today. We've got webinar ninja with Omar joining us today. Um, there's live streaming, there's Be Live, and all sorts of tools in here that will help you throughout that process. Um, I'm seeing stuff come up in chat. Is there anything I need to look at, Clive? Or have you got it? taking care of hopefully he has uh dan's here as well hey <laughs> it's great to see everyone here i'm going to come back to video i'm not going to i'll run from run from my notes it'll be easier um okay stop share stop screen share okay let's start the video again let's have a conversation and keep it there for those watching via facebook and watching via um zoom this morning thank you for all those lovely people who are telling me i'm looking gorgeous this morning in this green <laughs> i'm enjoying that on facebook okay okay so First part of the process is we need to plan. One of the planning tools that I love to use is either that Trello planning board that we've just shared with you in that course creation tools list. And if you go to the top of the Zoom feed, you will find that list and that board. That board will take you through the process of what do I need to do? The next thing, the next thing that I, other tool that I like to use is a tool called ClickUp. And it's, it's basically what I call um, Trello and Asana or Trello and steroids and ClickUp allows me to be able to just do a little bit more and a little bit more planning. So it's been really, really great to be able to move into a tools called ClickUp. And for us, it allows us a little bit more project management wise and being able to put things from, from there. Those tools, the, the planning and the project boards become the foundation of how you run your online workshops. It becomes the how to's and you need to take the content out of your head and place it somewhere where you can actually make it organizational. So whether it's just dumping some ideas, writing some stuff down, you need to take the content out of your head. The other thing we need to do as apart from planning and preparation is we actually need to take stock of what we already have. So whether that's looking at your events calendar and taking stock of what you have coming up, can I run that workshop? Is that event going to be running? Have you, and also speaking to your venues because you need to know if your venues are going to be open and available for you to be able to run the same workshops as well. The other things that we need to look at when we're doing taking stock is actually taking stock of the knowledge we already have. Now the knowledge you already have could be in your blog posts and there is a webinar we're running on, is your course hiding in your blog? which was actually booked before this session uh, in the next couple of weeks, which you'll find on the BBB homepage or Clive might pop the link in here for everyone. If he goes to the skills webinar skills page, you'll find the link for that one. Um, with, whether it's in your blog, whether it's in the presentations that you have been doing guest speaking. If you have been guest speaking, chances are you have some presentations, some notes like I have here that can be taken into a format where you can deliver a format where you can deliver the content, whether it's online, whether it's face-to-face, -face, um, whether it's live streaming or whether it's evergreen. Um, then we need to have really good communication with our people. So as I said, you go and talk to them, go and see where people are, have communication and find out what they want. Okay, I'm not saying, you know, try and cater to everyone's needs here. You will know who your people are. Um, and if you don't, we can, we can take a deep dive into that maybe some other time, you and I. Um, but you will know who your people are, but you need to understand how they want the content delivered because their landscape is changing at the same time as ours is right now. Their, land, their business life is changing. Do they want it to be self-paced learning? Do they want it to be a live session like this where you can come and interact and ask questions? Do they want it to be evergreen? Do they want it to be, be, be led? So do they want a, you know, a course or a challenge? That's something else that you can look at. Um, they, you might be able to look at those sorts of things as well. So we've got to look at how do my people then want this content delivered? Because running a meeting, an event or a workshop online is only good if it's how your people want it, okay? It's only good if they can actually take the information virtually throughout that period of time, okay? So have communication with your people. Then it comes into actually choosing the delivery platform 
and choosing the delivery method, okay? Um, and that's where the tools section comes into play or you can go and often have a link um, to, to have a look at the link throughout the processes. So there's a couple of ways you can deliver your content when it comes to sharing your stuff virtually. So meeting wise, in particular, you can do like live, well, you can do a live stream meeting, but it might be a bit weird to stream with everyone on Facebook. But for meeting wise, one of the tools we use here in the office on a regular basis is Zoom. Zoom allows people to be able to have, you can get a 40 minute account with Zoom and just get started. And you can just have a conversation with people via Zoom. Um, or you can do a premium version like we do where Clive and I integrate stuff with calendars and a whole heap of stuff as well. So Zoom is one of those tools that you can look at for online meetings. So when we're talking about people online meeting, there's a couple of things, key components. One is the, the tool that you're actually going to meet with people with. And the other thing is booking calendars so that people, you're not having to go back and forth with people over the time. So Zoom is one of those ones for online, meeting, online meetings that I talk about. GoToMeeting is another tool and it's GoToMeeting has been around forever. I used to use GoToMeeting in my corporate days and it has been around for a long time to be able to run online meetings and just get to meet and have a chat with people as well. So if you're looking for meeting tools in particular, they're the two that we recommend. So the other thing that I spoke about when we're looking at running meetings with our people is we've got to make it easy for them to book in to talk to us because there's nothing worse than trying to book into someone and you can't go, oh, you know, could I book in tomorrow? Or could I book in the next day? Or can I book in, um, you know, two weeks time? And then you're back and forth with 20 emails and it's not easy. And if it's not easy for your people to book a meeting with you or book a um a session with you, then they're not going to do it. So you can do things like have a you can book me calendar or you book like a boss, book like a boss has put together a lovely offer actually for all of our members as well. Calendar where people can literally go and book time with you. And by making that easy, they're going to be able to compare their calendar with your calendar. And that's going to hopefully allow them to be able to make the time easier for those sorts of things. Now, Uber, I know one of my students is here and he was skeptical about booking calendars and within the first 24 hours of having his booking calendar up on his website, he had bookings coming in through his website. So all of a sudden he's like, oh, that does work. Um, but booking calendars allow people to work with you all over the world. And, you know, as some of you know that I'm a part of the Thinking Big Expert panel, my booking calendar for discovery calls is linked to there so that people can book in any time that they want to have that discovery call with me about courses and those sorts of things. Okay, so the, uh, there are a couple of key things about those that area there. So booking calendars are a really big one, being able to have a conversation and I'll pop the links to the booking calendars in quickly for you so that you've got them here now. Um, so booking calendar options, you've got You Can Book Me, which is the one we use here, book, book Like a Boss, and Acuity Scheduling. Now, I've, there are many, many BBB members who talk about Acuity Scheduling uh, and how much they love it inside the group, um, inside BBB and inside um, all other communities as well. And Book Like a Boss the same way. It's got some great integrations in it. You will find a calendar that works best for you. Throughout this journey, and the reason we have multiple people who provide multiple services coming in on the panel today, um, as well as all sorts of other things, is you need to find the tools that are right for you and your journey throughout the process, okay? So we need to have it so people can book in for meetings. We need to have clear communications and we need to um, send reminders. Um, yeah, Rebecca, see you later. We'll, we'll catch you on the replay. And I'm not, I'm sorry guys, I can't keep up with the chat. Today is busy, and I, but I'm loving how busy it is. I'm sure Clive will bring me the stuff that I need to pay attention to. Um, okay, so you can use your booking calendars to get to have that information. So we, we need to take stock of our stuff and we need to look, you know, write it all down and work out what we're doing. Use a tool like ClickUp or, or Trello to plan and then use those planning boards to be able to get things out there. Then you look at your communication tools. Um, your communication tools can also, um, yeah, bookings in Office 365. Um, look, it will be interesting to compare and see how others work. Um, I'm hoping that feedback didn't come through to everyone else and just came back through my computer. Um, so it look, it is, I've got clients who use Booking 365 and they love it and it's part of their package. And if it's part of your package, don't go and spend more money unless you're like me and like bright shiny objects. Sorry, accounts people, bye. <laughs> they're all tuning off the webinar now because they're going, oh my God, she's going to find more tools and uh, get more stuff today. Okay, so have a, what we need to do from the planning preparation point of view is have a look at what's in our calendar, 
know what's in your presentation library and come up with some ideas. And one of the handy little tools that we use for coming up for ideas when it comes to searching for your ideas for your course creation content or your workshop content that you're going to deliver, because we'll delve more into the workshops and classes now, cover the online meeting stuff, is there's one tool that we use called Answer the Public. Now, Answer the Public, I've just popped a link in for you there on the uh, Facebook, on the um, on the Zoom and I'm popping it in for the live stream. It's a, we've got a tutorial of how you do it. It actually takes the algorithm and starts to look at the keywords that people are putting into search. So go and pop your key topic in and get people to search, you know, come up, come up with a wheel. It comes up with a content creation wheel full of ideas and topics that you can write around. Now, part of that will be your, your marketing. So part of those ideas as you start to generate them will, will come to be the marketing, the complementary stuff that goes with the course. Because as educators, we need to show we know our stuff before we ask people to buy our stuff. That's a big key thing along the journey as well. Okay, just gonna take another sip of water. Okay. And I'm, guys, I'm, I'm having a general conversation with you today. Um, once, you've, once we've gone through and we've got our ideas, as I said, we do talk to our students. We need to know if they want live content, evergreen content, whether they would like the content led by you so do they want a you know five day challenge a 10 day challenge a blogging challenge and, and do they want um self-paced learning and do they want replays now if you do a free challenge and people want replays there's always the option to charge for replays in this particular one we're not doing so but you might charge you might go okay well this is our live price and this is our real pay price and the replay might they might get lifetime access so it's always something you got to consider as you start to to get there and the other thing that we need to do on our course creation journey before we start looking at the tech and we start looking at the email communications and all of those sorts of things is we need to look at what is right for us, what um, preparing our space, sorry. And that means having things like lights in your office. So you can see that I'm pretty well lit up here this morning. I've actually got three lights on to, to, to have the lights coming in on me here. Um, Okay, Facebook live stream is on my Facebook page. Veronica's just asked me where the Facebook live stream is here. Give me two seconds, I'll grab you the, I'll grab you my Facebook live stream. You should be getting the links all here as well too, guys, hopefully in the chat. But um, yeah, we've got the links both here and in the chat. Hopefully you should be getting both. But there's, there's the Facebook live stream as well for those wanting the live stream. You won't get as much access to the panel though in the live stream. We'll have to work out how I'm going to move this phone around to talk to everyone. Um, okay, so bear in mind, we need to prepare our space, which means we need to have somewhere where we can talk to people. We need to have things like microphones. We need to have things like web cameras or smartphones. And seriously, my smartphone does some of the best video recording in the Samsung that we have here. Um, we need to make sure that we have our tech right for those, those areas as well. So when you go through that process, um, it's about preparing your space. So where are you going to record? Have you got some quiet space to be able to record in? There's nothing worse. And look, in live sessions like this, I you tend to use my headset, but you can use microphones. There's lots of Rode microphones, lots of stuff out there that you can use. There's Blue Yeti. There's all sorts of things when it comes to microphones throughout that journey. Um, I have a blog post, which I'll grab for you very shortly, guys, on course creation tools, um, which is tools to market your course and those sorts of things, just a little bit extra to what we've covered here today, which covers my preferred versions of microphones and those sorts of things. Um, let me just grab this one as well for you. Put it in the Zoom area as well, multitasking today. Okay, so there is the, the link that if you wanna go into the microphones and all those sorts of things more, but you need to prepare your space. So for me, normally, I would be either here at my desk, which you see right now with my little retro TV and all of the things that make me a little bit quirky and a little bit different, to being part of me, or I'd be delivering on the red couch, which is over there, which no one gets to see today because in the craziness that has been this week, it is a complete and utter disaster and a dumping ground for all the stuff that I haven't had a chance to do. Um, and I then set up with my lights and I set up with my space and I go to my zone to record that content. Okay, that's the biggest thing I would say to you is it, whether you're delivering a live session or whatever you're doing, create your space. Now, Clive will tell you that um, I got very excited. I put Tim McGraw on Spotify before I started here this morning because that's my, my get pumped up music and get ready to do deliver webinars and sessions like this. Like this. Um, and I got very excited because just before I needed to turn the music off, my favourite song was there. 
create yourself a playlist so that you can mentally prepare for when you're going to do content. And I will let you in on an absolute tip. None of you will be perfect in the content that you deliver in the first time. I'm not perfect in the content that I'm delivering here today. There is, there is all sorts of things. But if you're worried about that content being perfect, then you will never get the message out. Okay, you will never get to share the message. If you worried about the content being perfect, then you will let down your people by not delivering content in the best way possible, in the, in the easiest way possible for them to consume in the current market. Now, there are opportunities for all of us here in moving into the online space because not only does the market that you were, were looking at servicing in your face-to-face -face workshops or your face-to-face -face meetings, that you've got now got the opportunity to open up that to a wider reach. Uh, you can live stream it like we're doing here on Facebook as well as going you know, live in the Zoom session, but you've got the opportunity to be able to move things forward and reach out to people in another way, shape or form and build that audience in a further scale. So personal story inside what we're doing inside end of a group at the moment, we had a number of workshops booked um, all of them that fit within the current restrictions, we look at continuing to deliver. But there was another second half, about five workshops that we were, were yet to run and we were yet to set up the rest of the year. I will now look at delivering those online. It means changing up my energy levels and the delivery process a little bit differently. But we'll actually look at running those sessions on live as live training sessions. Um, and then we'll most probably take it to workshops. So it goes down to taking stock about where you, where you come into those, when you come into things. But once again, it's also about planning and preparing my space. So when I'm going to prepare that space, I'm actually going to have whiteboards because I would, when I'm delivering the face-to-face -face workshops, I would have a whiteboard in the background. So here somewhere you will see a whiteboard. Um, you, I will be mic'd up rather than, you know, headphone jack, <laughs> I'll be using a microphone. Um, and then we'll have someone who'll be feeding me the questions here live. So it's a slightly different process when we set up our space throughout the process there. Um, I've mentioned things about keeping keeping track. I've mentioned things about making sure that we we do the right things there. Uh, do there. Mentioned thing about talking to your clients. Now I've touched base with you on actually getting the tech right. And when we bring the panel in, I'm sure they will be able to share more content with you and more tips on getting the tech right because lots of our expert panel here are part of our technical team. You know, uh, part of the tech team. We've got Tamara from Thinkific joining us shortly. I'm not sure that she's here yet on the panel list, um, but we've got lots of people being able coming in to join us and talk to us um, in relation to those sorts of things. Um, so the tech size of things. So when it comes to tech and delivering our content, well, there's a couple of things that we need to look at, um, as we said, with the delivery. So we've sur we survey our students and we ask them what they want. So if they want live content, are you going to deliver it via Facebook Live? Are you going to live stream it? Now, addition to Zoom, which did not work for me for live streaming today, as the people are seeing on the Facebook Live here. Um, in addition to Zoom, there is the option for you to be able to, um, there's live streaming platforms. So there's stuff like StreamYard that will stream to YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn at the same time. There is tools and they're, all of these guys are literally in the, tool, in the tools post link that I've sent you. There is... Um, Clive, can you post a link back for everyone too, please, to that blog post um, with the tools link in it? There's tools like Be Live TV, which takes your, your live streaming up a bit. And you can put in polls and quizzes throughout the journey there as well. So there's different uh, streaming tools like there. And there's also LiveStorm, which is a webinar tool, but also allows you to stream live to YouTube at the same time. So when you work out what your people want, you've got to work out how best are you going to deliver it. And so there's some of the tech, tech we've just spoken about. Then, do they want evergreen content? Do they want a replay? Do they want to be able to come and access it at every particular at moments in time? And that's where tools like Omar from Webinar Ninja comes into play. It's where maybe you look at putting a membership area using Patreon or where courses um, in Thinkific. Um, Lisa, did you say whiteboard would be harder in the background? Look, we'd most probably just have screenshots of that whiteboard coming up because as we brainstorm sessions, um, sorry, Liz, I'll just get seeing that. Um, yeah, look, it is, it's interesting, but yeah, we'd most probably, depending on how it's set up, um, and that's part of what we're going to have to test is because, but when I do a face-to-face -face session, I will call from the audience and we'll brainstorm. So 
I don't think I do that any other way than pen to paper because that's how my brain works. But whether I got my team to, to screenshot it at the end and, and put it in, it'll be part of that process. And that's part of the things that we've got to negotiate in this journey, just the same as you guys do. But there are video creators out there that write on a whiteboard, film it and get it set up. So I'm sure there'll be a way to light it and get it to work for us. I uh, hope that answers your question. Um, okay. Um, and Clive, can you just check that there's no other questions that I need to answer from members in there? If there is, just ping me a quick note. Um, okay, so when it comes into the, the content of then delivering, whether we're going to deliver via evergreen or evergreen content. So if they want stuff that they can come in and self-pace and get back access learning to, um, and the Facebook Live dropped out, but it's here. There we go, we are here. Um, sorry guys. Um, have a look at what, what are you going to look at? So is it webinars or is it courses? Now, Omar and there's a platform, you know, Zoom, Webinar Ninja, um, all, um, um, all have evergreen platforms in there. Um, Demio, Demio, which is another one that we've popped into the tools section, has evergreen webinars in there. So there's a good evergreen webinar, webinar, evergreen webinar workflow flow in the, the tools kits for you there. And I'll grab the webinar tools and put them in there as well. You can then do live webinars like this one. Now, I'm my preference in the office has always been live training. You know, that's always been my preference is to deliver content live so you can engage with it and you can ask me questions. Um, and then I had to move into the world of, you know, moving into online education, which means that even though this is still my preference, I will deliver courses that are self-paced through platforms like Thinkific, platforms like, um, platforms like, um, yeah, Thinkific and Skillshare, and there's there's other platforms out there. Um, and Hey Summit, where we do pre-recorded stuff, and I'm just going to pop all the links in actually for all of that stuff into the chats so that you can have it right now. Uh, and you can see where they are. Um, so think, you know, then I've got to do look at courses. So when you're actually looking at your content delivery and you're looking at how are we going to do this, if we're going to go evergreen, what is the best way forward? Now, once again, it might be time to poll your people. It might be time to say, how would you like it delivered? Because we are creating it for the for our people. So if we're creating it for a course, course create people to come in and learn courses, then you know, and they want to want to want you to have a school and a library like we have at the end of a group business academy, then you can do that. It might be a case that you want people want to do an online challenge. And those of you who follow me might have seen we ran a course creation kickstart online this year, which took one of my face-to-face -face workshops and we ran it online. They they might they might look at and we'll most probably bring back later on in this year, our 30 day blogging challenge, where I lead with you live with a meeting each day, different ways to blog for your business. So it's about looking at the content and saying, who is it? And bearing in mind that not all your audience will want the content the same way. With 30,000 members inside the business, business, business community, I know I need to adapt for those who particularly want to work with me to the different forms of content that they would like us to to deliver and the different ways that they would like us to need to engage with us. And that's the biggest thing that my online journey has taught me is just because I like one form of content doesn't mean my audience is going to engage with that content back best. Sometimes they will like video, sometimes they will like live, sometimes they will like evergreen, sometimes they want to read it, sometimes they want to engage with it. Sometimes they just want to watch it in replay because I talk too fast. It's all fine when it comes down to your content delivery. Um, so when you have a look at the, the areas there, have a look at the platform that's going to work best for you. Now, I don't have time to deep dive into each of them. We'll, we'll talk to the guys about their tech a little bit later and they can introduce what they, what they do and what their technology is to help you be able to get out of there, uh, to get out of that tech. But, you know, go and have a look and explore, click on the list, have a, have a real play around those areas. Now, I'm going to talk about promotion before I talk about production and delivery. And the reason I'm going to talk about promotion before I talk about production and delivery is we need people right now, in particular, if you're in a financial situation, you need people to register for pre-sale um, courses and, and to pre-sale, whether it's registering for a webinar or whatever it is, um, it's about building that, that process out there. So one of the key things that comes into this is that building pre-sale pages, building landing pages that will be able to get out there, building a network and an article bank that will support your topic, getting out there and building your expertise in the online space by talking on podcasts. 
Um, this is all part of the legwork of the process that will help you run your meetings and your uh, run your workshops and your classes online. You need to start to be online and be visible online so that people can find you. So whether that's if you're a business writer, I guess posting to somewhere like business, 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 whether you're a financial writer, whether it's writing for financial sites, whether you're a holistic person writing for holistic sites, whether it's going to Apple and typing in your key words into podcasts or Spotify or whatever you want to go to, typing in your keywords for those podcasts and starting to find a network where you can say, I'm an expert on this. I normally get speak about this. I'd love to come and talk on an episode with you. And I'm sure Clive will pop in his business conversations link for those of you who are business owners into the chat and the Facebook, um, Facebook live stream as well. For those of you who are business owners to apply to become a business conversations guest. Um, and if you could also grab the article submission link for BBB. For those of you who are business writers, you are more than welcome to contribute content there. So there's two opportunities that I've, we've, we've given you this morning to be able to promote your content. So when it comes down to promotion, there's a world out there at the moment that's driving me a little bit crazy that, um, where we think that business owners have to pause what they are doing and promoting their business because we're in a pandemic, because of the bushfires and because of all of those things. If we do not adapt, if we do not continue to promote, we don't have to do it in a sleazy way, but if we do not adapt and we do not continue to promote our businesses, then we do not have the income to support others. We do not have the income to continue paying our staff. We do not have the income to continue to do things. So we need in this process of adapting and being able to better serve our clients by having online and virtual services while the, you know, we're not allowed to go out and congregate in large groups and those sorts of things and why people are in self-isolation. The biggest thing about this is, is we need to let people know that those services are there. I was speaking to a business owner here in Bendigo yesterday and, you know, normally a massively packed busy cafe first thing in the morning. Um, there was maybe about seven or eight people in the thing. And when I talk busy packed, I'm talking you know, 40, 50 people. It's not, not a small, um, small operation. Um, I spoke to the business owner about, you know, how things were going and he was talking to me about his adaption, the, the adaption options that they had. And now it was a matter of getting that, that adaption option of being able to do deliveries and home cooked meals and those sorts of things it was a matter of getting that story out there. Okay, so just because a service, a face-to-face -face based business or a bricks and mortar business is changing the way they operate, the biggest, we don't stop promoting what we do, we promote what we're doing now. Okay, so make sure that you continue to promote what you're doing throughout this journey. Don't feel icky about it. Don't, you don't have to touch, you know, hey, because of coronavirus or hey, because of COVID-19, we're doing this. But you need to promote what you're doing because if you don't, you are no good to the community, okay? Because if you don't earn income, you cannot help anyone else throughout this process. And we need us all to be financially viable and we need us all to be continuing to run our businesses and our services. Um, so don't feel bad in throughout the promotion journey. Just, you know, do it in a nice way. Don't be crass about it. Um, and don't just shove the word COVID-19 into everything, thinking that it's going to increase your, increase your search area. Okay. so. We're going to have a look at um, some marketing tools and in the tools that I've got for you there in the toolkit, there's a couple of tools that I really would like to highlight. Um, Dan from Quick, who is with us, he, both on, I think both on live stream and the Zoom session. Quick is actually a really cool tool to add, autom um, add captions to your videos automatically. Um, it's very, very cool and very cool, great to play with and we've got um, Dan's given me a link for this morning and I don't, I haven't had a chance to be able to grab it because I wasn't here live as we're starting to talk. Um, but I've got it now. I've got one now. Here we go. Um, quick is pretty awesome when it comes to um, doing the videos and Dan has, um, basically let you do the first couple of videos on them. So that's pretty cool. So quick is one of those handy tools when it comes to marketing, but there's two other tools that I would love to talk to you about in relation to moving your marketing forward just a little bit differently. So and they're in the tools list and it's called Dub and Video Ask. And Dub and Video Ask, in addition to you doing your YouTube videos and your Facebook videos, which show your expertise, they allow you to have a video conversation with your people. Um, now, I love both of them. Um, I'm yet to decide which one we will use here in the office because I started playing with both of these tools before 
COVID-19 hit us this hard. Um, but they are both really, really good tools to have a conversation. And if you're teaching online, they're also going to be a really handy tool for you to have a video conversation with your students. So have an explore of those tools in particular. They are two very good marketing tools that will come into play. The other tool that we've recently discovered throughout the process here in the marketing tools when it comes to promoting your stuff is um, do, 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 in video. And in video is good. It's part of the production toolkit you can use as well. It's good for social videos. Um, but you know those logo stings and the, the really fancy stuff that you see coming out on videos? then that is that is what in video does it is really really cool um guys i'm gonna let you go to the tools list because i'm trying to scroll through and find the link and i'm not getting the right link for you uh but in video is very very cool for that one as well so go and have a look at um have a look at the the tools there and and have a look at it from there so then it comes to the promotion is the, the big key thing so try and get your lead pages up if you're using tools like thinkific you can get them up straight away if you're using tools like webinar ninja or go to meeting or um you know, you're live streaming using StreamYard or, or Be Live. you can create the events and you can actually put the, the links up and have them ready to go. Um, for those of you who know me well enough, I was still working on this presentation at 5 a.m. this morning, working out what we were going to talk to you about today to make sure I had all the, all the tools into that toolkit for you this morning. Um, so you can prepare and you can pre-sell where you're going. So to, for just to recap, have a look at the presentations that you've got have a look at the information that you've got to share, um, have a look at how they can be taken and start to pre-sell it, okay? Then we go into production and how do we, produ how do we deliver this? And then we, as I said, we've mentioned mo multiple forms of technology. My preferred method of delivering evergreen content is via courses. So that's where I, you know, made the move into online courses a couple of years ago when I couldn't, when my health just stopped me from traveling. Um, it stopped me from traveling anywhere near the amount that I did to be the classroom teacher that I love to be. Um, so we moved to online courses and we moved to delivery platforms from there. And that's sometimes what comes down to in your business too, is you have to change up because you can no longer deliver your business model the way you want to. Um, so when it comes to production and delivery, there's a couple of things. You don't need to go and spend a fortune. You can start this delivery journey by, I'm trying to talk to Facebook people because I haven't spoken to them for a while, uh, you can talk, go through this journey um, throughout the process of just by simply using your smartphone. So using something like face smartphone, using good lighting. So, you know, um, going and spending that little bit of time to be able to get get good lighting for your videos. So eBay has a fortune, has a lot of them. Now, would I say go and spend out, you know, go and buy really good lights? But absolutely, if you can afford to. But, you know, not everyone's going to be able to afford to go and buy massively good lights. Um, I'm just seeing if my kit's behind me here. Uh, yeah, I have got some of my kit behind me. Don't have all of it, but I've got some of it. <laughs> That's good. Oh, the mic's up here as well. They're beautiful. Okay, so when it comes to it, this is my main recording kit. I'm going to Facebook people. I'm going to take you offline here for a second. This, my smartphone, is number one. The light you can actually see reflecting in the background is a clamp light that um, I hear you can get really cheap at LD at the moment. Uh, that helps you be able to get there. I have my clicker for my PowerPoint presentation. So even if I'm presenting not face to face, I have a clicker right here that allows me to present. I then have my favorite video mic, me mic, which clicks on and it's actually got a whole heap of other attachments which are buried in a box somewhere in my office. Um, this mic clicks into the smartphone adapter of my, um, of my phone. Hey Rob, how are you? <laughs> uh, this one clicks in and allows me to be able to get started with the video and, and record good audio. There's been a couple of people ask me this week actually, you know, I'm a yoga instructor. How do I do my videos? How do I get information out that way? This is the microphone to do that. And then I have my very first baby microphone and Nick Russell, who I do video work with and video workshops with, gave me my first ever Rode microphone. Um, and this is a lapel microphone and it plugs into either my computer, my speaker or whatever it is, and I can get started. Now you can go further, you can have, and Clive, can you come on screen and show people your Rode, your Rode microphone right now, please? If you possibly could just turn your video on and show people, Clive has got a um, podcaster's microphone. Uh, yes, 
and he's also got the dedicated background. See, I go, ah, oh, you can have my office. Uh, there's, your, there's your lovely road mark you said earlier. Is it too hard to take your Brio web, webcam off too? Because we had some questions about webcams. Is it too hard for you to take that off and show people? Yeah, because you're actually on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Please take a photo and add it to the chat. That would be great. <laughs> ah, gee, you gotta got to love that uh, I need more coffee. Okay, so that's the production side of things where it comes to starting out this content. You do not have to spend a fortune. Then you can go into the tools where you're actually going to edit. Now, there's a massive amount of tools out there in the world of things, but things like creating your course graphics, your course logos, all of that sort of stuff, and whether it's a course or a workshop or a webinar graphic or logo can be done with the same sort of tools. Um, you can look at things like uh, Canva. Canva is great. Uh, you can look at Quick to obviously automate it. You've got WeVideo. WeVideo is the best cloud editor that I have ever used. And when we first started, and I'm sure Clive and everyone will back me up on this in my team, when we first started editing video, we didn't have the upload capabilities of being able to spend hours uploading videos. <laughs> we had the worst video stuff. And I'm just popping the tools links into the chat so you've got them now as well, guys. Uh, we had the worst connections in the world. So I needed a cloud-based editor that would send my videos directly to YouTube and directly to Google Drive without me having to download it and upload it. Um, because the speed was ridiculous. So WeVideo was the tool that we used and we actually have been using WeVideo since 2009 when we started Family Capers. Um, so that's the cloud-based editing tool that we use. Chemista is also a good one, which we've popped in there as well. And we've popped in a couple of other tools that are there. What we do do then is we use um, Canva to create most of our branded images. There's some great tools out there like Easel as well that will help you to do that. Um, and we use then tools like Busy, Busy, um, busy me and those uh, to create infographics and content as far as pdfs go and putting out downloadable pdfs we create them in word we save them um, and we make them a downloadable pdf from there if we want the person to interact with the document then we'll give them the word template because in the reality of it in in if they wanted to convert the word template into the pdf into a word document they will and that brings me to one very important course creation teaching topic if you are worried about people copying your content, this is not your space, okay? People will unfortunately copy content and reproduce it or they'll teach it in a slightly different way or they'll do something different. The thing that makes you different in delivering the content is you, is the person, is how you deliver the content, how you explain it because no one can explain the content the way that you do and no one can teach it with the same experience you do. So please don't worry about copycats, don't worry about people who do different things. And as you can see today, by having people from different platforms that all offer a similar service coming in, we don't, they don't worry about it. They, they walk, were they talking about being in the space? There is enough business for everyone. You will serve your clients, they can serve their clients, and it's all perfectly fine. So when it comes to production, it's about you know, making sure that you've got your space and your time and your videos. And then you've obviously got to build your landing pages and, and choose your delivery platforms, which as we said, we're thinkific. And as you start to go through that process, you will know a little bit more. Guys, there is so much I want to teach you in the way of course creation and taking your workshops online. But really the, today, the key messages I want to leave you with is take stock of what you have, talk to your students and make sure that you know, you know what you've got to be able to deliver and then plan out the best way to deliver it. You don't need to launch your course tomorrow. You don't need to launch it this week. You can launch it next week when people are ready to take that content or you can launch it in two or three weeks time when you are confident. Don't wait to be perfect though, because perfection never happens when it comes to course delivery or online content. And today's live stream is a perfect example of that one. The technology just failed and we weren't able to live stream at the same time using the Zoom tool. Um, I'm going to open up to questions that people might have, particularly for me. Hanny's joining us now. We've got more people coming in from the panel. I'm just going to give you a few questions to ask me questions. If you can use the Q&A button down the bottom of the screen, there's a little Q&A chat box rather than chat we'll be able to ident identify each of those questions individually. If you would like to come in and please ask me some questions about course creation. Um, if you want to deep dive with me, there's a link to be able to deep dive with me as well. Omar's coming in, everyone's coming in. I'll grab you that link as well. If you found today's session helpful, 
I love coffee. Um, and you can buy me a virtual coffee. And that, oh, dad, dad, gosh, I didn't even talk about that. Okay, so there is one more thing I need to talk about. Uh, and that is actually running your content by memberships. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, okay, so two of the tools that I actually researched for you guys throughout the process. And I have to thank um, the Two Buddy, uh, not Two Buddy, the um, Change of Studios guys for, for sending me down this exploration. It's monetization by donation or membership, okay? So monetization from your content that you're creating, you might be creating really good content on YouTube. You might be creating really good content on live streams and you might be creating really good content um, that's free or on blogs. And these, these platforms here that I'm sharing with you allow you to be able to monetize via membership. So a couple of them that we're talking about here is Thinkific obviously allows you to bundle courses together. And if you're a marketing circle member of mine, which I know numbers of people here are, that's where you get inner access to me via Facebook groups and all of those sorts of things. The other components of them are is buy me a coffee, which is the link I popped in there for you a moment ago, which allows members to say, hey, I've run an information session. If it's any value to me, you think you want to buy me a coffee, they can buy you a coffee and it's three bucks and it's just a little bit of a thank you. Um, uh, so there's buy me a coffee, there's coffee, there's also Patreon. Now I haven't had a chance to deep, uh, deep dive, delve into Patreon, but I'm sure some of our attendees here may have had a chance to do that one. And that's where you create member only content and it links in well with YouTube um, and you can then release just restricted videos and all of that sort of stuff. So sorry for forgetting that component of the um, the presentation, but it is a really good way as well. And we might do some breakout sessions. And if you're part of the course creator circle, we've actually got some of those sessions in a little bit further. There is a question for me here. What are the best tools to create an intro and entry into an online tutorial? Look, in all honesty, I would be, there's, there's a whole heap of them, but for the logo stings and everything in video, the in video tool that we popped in, I'm just going to find that. Give me two seconds. I'll just go. Yeah, um, in video has social videos in it. It has um, logo animations. It has intros and outros. It has all sorts of stuff packed into it. So I would have a look at in video, and here is the link. Um, it is pretty impressive software, and I didn't think I was going to um, get so impressed by that software. Um, Jill, thank you. I'm glad you're great. I'm going to bring the panel in. If you've got, hey Anne, how are you? Apologies, I ducked out last night. But I lost internet. Okay, guys, do you want to unmute yourself and we'll come in and we'll start having an introduction and having a bit of a chat with everyone. Okay, Facebook people, how are we going to do this for you? Oh, Dan, if I realised you're going to wear your thinky for hoodie, I would have matched you. Hey, Doyle. Okay, Hi. Facebook people. <laughs> I don't think that's working. Okay, guys, if you're watching the Facebook live stream, I'm going to have to end this now. I will pop the replay video up, uh, head to the Zoom session, which is in the chat if you need to, and we will keep going from there. And don't you love it when technology doesn't always play nicely for you? Okay, uh, otherwise, we'll see you over in Zoom. Come on over and say hi there. Right. Okay, now we're in one spot. That might be good. Uh, George has raised her hand. Georgina's raised her hand. Um, guys, I want to, first of all, before we start taking questions and, and raising hands, we might actually just have a bit of an introduction about who everyone is, um, which is a little bit... We're just running up tomorrow. Tomorrow's, uh, we're a few minutes early, though. We're five minutes early, so we're only a couple of extra people coming through. What you see in front of you, people, is people we've worked with. People Clive and I've worked with over the years. You see experts and leaders in their field who most of them at three o'clock in the morning when I said, hey, next Friday I'm going to run this session at 10, said, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I, I didn't look at me strangely or weirdly. They just agreed to the process. So I'd like to thank you all for coming in and joining us this morning. Clive, would you like to jump on as well, please, if you can, so everyone can see you as well today? Ant here. Okay. Uh, we yeah. might do we might do this throughout the process. So for those of you who didn't know who I was married to, uh, he does live <coughs> in the uh, other room, <laughs> and I occasionally get to see him. Um, this week, I don't know I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> All I know is I set up some Facebook live streams for him earlier on in the week. And for those of you who didn't catch those, um, there was some really good information sessions that Clive ran inside BBB and on his website around COVID nineteen, the legal aspects of it the stimulus package, which he'll be doing a new updated session with, with Kylie over the next little while. 
and um, Karen Hillen on the, on the HR side of things. So particularly for our Australian members, because unfortunately I'm not sure that we can cover every, every country's legislation. Honey, because you're the one I can see on my screen first, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Hanny Moore. Uh, I'm the founder of Repurpose.io. It's a software that helps you kind of get your content out to different platforms automatically, your audio and video content. Uh, it helps you kind of create content once and distribute it to multiple platforms. I know. And you bought scheduling in this week. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Omar, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. I'm Omar Zenholm. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Webinar Ninja, uh, an easy to use webinar platform. Uh, we've been around for six years, uh, but uh, I've been running a remote team uh, from around the world for over eight years. Uh, so happy to help in that area for those who uh, are transitioning into remote work uh, during this time. Uh, it's, uh, one, it's a challenge <laughs> what's going on around the world, but um, I, I, I think it's a, an opportunity for all of us um, uh, as well as a chance for us to show leadership in our team and show them that we got their back. I think, Omar, you have a, um, an event very shortly about uh, just how one might transition. Is that right? Yeah, we have a, uh, a webinar. Uh, that I, yeah, I'll definitely pop the link in. Um, it's uh, a, an open webinar for anybody who wants to uh, learn the best strategies in transitioning to working from home. Um, I'm just going to be sharing basically the things that have kept me sane uh, working remotely. Uh, these are tips that have been gathered just not only from me, but from my team members, what has worked, journaling. Uh, you know, how do you separate work life from uh, personal life when everything is in the same building, uh, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, I'll pop the link in the, in the chat and uh, you're uh, welcome to join us tomorrow. That'd be awesome. That would be great. Um, Tamara, hi, how are you? <laughs> hi, okay. Hi. Good, good. Uh, we're definitely grabbing the, the screen together here. Um, for those of you who don't know, Clive and I actually both have worked. How old is Charlotte now? 11. She's turning 11. That's how long we've worked from home, uh, running remote businesses and, and corporate, you know, away from those sorts of things. Um, I, you think I joke when I say I don't see him, but there are boundaries. And my biggest tip for those of you working from home is get a bloody door quickly so that you can shut it and walk away from stuff <laughs> or put something over your laptop at night, put something over it so you can't see it and get some designated workspace because that will be the best thing you can possibly do. And you need to have that boundary. And I know there's multiple YouTube and Facebook live rants where I've got out there about why that boundary is important and enforcing that for both your student, both your um, customers and your family and friends. Rob, hello. I actually haven't met Rob face to face before, but I've heard lots of things. You might know Rob from Hay Summit um, because of Ben and all the work that he's done with us in Missing Letter, with Missing Letter here inside the community. And Missing Letter is one of the tools that I've recommended for you. So Rob, I've got the two Robs together. This is, this is good. <laughs> Would you like to say hi and introduce us? God, what time in the morning is it with you? Uh, no, it's not, uh, not too bad. It's just, just about to go uh, midnight. So it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm Rob. Uh, I run Hey Summit. Uh, we're also a, a remote team, uh, proudly, uh, and um, Hey Summit's uh, a virtual uh, summit platform. So all the organizational aspects about organizing summits, landing pages, uh, attendee management, uh, ticket sales, speaker management, um, all that kind of stuff you can do on Hey Summit, and then you plug that into uh, webinar platforms, live streaming um, sources, and uh, pre-recorded videos. Um, we also uh, published a an event guide for for event planners who are needing to transition their in person events to virtual ones because of coronavirus. Um, so it's actually you can go to coronaeventguide.com and you can uh, get access to that. I can put it in the in the, uh, in the pop it in the link for in the chat time, as well when we get the girls to put their final resources yeah, together from today. Um, it'll be in there in the text for us to be able to find. So that would be great. Um, okay. Yes, I've done webinars with Ben at two in the morning. So, and vice versa, he's returned the favour to me. Uh, Rob, Chew Buddy now, not Thinkific Rob, now Chew Buddy Rob. <laughs> For those of you who know Rob from previous webinars. Yes, hey, hey Linda, hey Clive, good to be here. Thanks for, for inviting us and good to see Tamara. 
from Think FA. <laughs> hey, Tam. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Rob Balasadis. I'm the brand evangelist at a company called TubeBuddy. We're a browser extension and a mobile and web app that integrates directly with your YouTube channel uh, to help you run your channel better. Um, so we have uh, over 60 different uh, tools inside of our platform to help YouTube creators grow their channel and manage your channel and um, just productivity tools, uh, all related to running a YouTube channel. So that's what yes, we do. I, I'm loving seeing my students come in saying they love TubeBuddy. It's some of my favorite tools. I love nice. TubeBuddy. <laughs> love the name. You didn't pay me for it either. <laughs> I know, I know. That's free. Yeah. Because I've been using TubeBuddy before you joined them. <laughs> Dan. Uh, Good morning. morning. Thank you for your multiple messages. You're almost probably in a ridiculous time zone, though. Uh, right. I don't even know what time it is right now. What time is it right now? It is midnight. It's midnight. Right <laughs> See, I love you. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, so I'm Dan Holloway. I'm the CMO of Quick. So Quick is a, a video captioning tool. So you upload your video and we will take the, the narrative out of that. We'll caption it all. You can download the SRT file and repurpose that within all of your other repurposing strategies. And we can get to that later if you need to. Um, or we would actually burn the, the video captions directly into the video. So brand it the way you want, have it you know, top of the screen, bottom of the screen, fonts, sizes, buffering, padding, whatever, however you want it to look yep. and make it look very pretty. And from a branding expert, for me, it that drives me extra control that I love. Yes, exactly. I love control of fonts and colours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good tool to check out, guys. Please check it out. Doyle. Yes. Digital disillusion, man. <laughs> digital delusion, yeah. I'm feeling deluded now. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. My name is Doyle Bueller, and um, I'm author of a couple books on digital strategy. Um, and yeah, uh, my sort of raison d'etre is to help businesses build a, a platform, a foundation that they can actually then use to get in touch with their contacts, with their um, customers and, um, you know, building out those pieces that really help them grow their business online. Fantastic. Guys, please keep the questions coming through in the Q&A. Happy to take it. Um, yeah, we... Um, and I'm really, really grateful for all of our panelists being here today because I know we're working across multiple time zones and it's huge to have everyone here. But please take the moment and time to ask these guys questions. Looks like Michelle from GoToWebinar is trying to join us too. Hopefully she'll get in very shortly. And hi. Hello. Long time no speak. <laughs> I know. I think we were on a session last night. We were. <laughs> yes. Um, I guess I'm introducing myself. My name's Ant. I'm from a company, Changer. I'm one of the founders. Uh, we work with uh, video creators and media companies and help them uh, grow their channels and also grow their businesses. So we work a lot with YouTube and YouTube creators. Um, we run programs all over the world. We are based in Australia. Um, I am the only team member in Melbourne. The rest of the team is spread across the country, mostly in thousands of kilometres away. So I, I'm very experienced at remote working as well, but uh, we work with creators across Asia Pacific region um, and we have run programs virtually and in person, but we have just flipped the switch from all our in-person events to virtual. And the first one was last night. So yeah, was it was. And we did, and it went really, really well. You used Livestorm for that one, didn't you? Yes. We did use Livestorm. Uh, yep. And we have an online course with Thinkific and we, yeah. You know, like a lot of our programs are uh, actually uh, in partnership with Google and YouTube. So we've, in the past, a lot of Google Hangout type capacity, which they've just given enterprise access to everybody. As if you haven't met Dan, you need to check Dan stuff too. You'll like that. Sweet. Yep. And look, Ant was one of the most, probably the first people that I that I saw that had to hit the ground running very quickly going, hey, our event's not actually going to be running face to face. Uh, Dan, thank you for popping in the referral link um, for the situation there. I'm just going to move it to all attendees so that we can get in there. There you go, guys. There's our referral link for Quick, which is a, a nice little one. Um, if you just, if you want to talk to everyone, just move it to the um, all, all panelists and attendees. Clive's disappeared, so I could introduce him. He's a business strategist. He's spent 30 years. Oh, you want to introduce yourself now? <laughs> you can introduce yourself. You need to unmute yourself. Somebody's got to keep this show running. Yeah. 
and next time we'll get somebody else because uh, <laughs> yes i'm a business coach and i'm pretty damn good at it but when it comes to technology uh, i'm way behind oh. but, uh, in terms of helping people transition from wherever they are to wherever they want to be which in this case at the present time seems like uh, let's get out of real into virtual uh, i'm pretty handy at coming up with uh, strategies to help with that so, and great to meet all you people and thank you very much for turning up because there's a, a big lot of people out there who at the moment looking for help and you guys are prime place to deliver so good on you for turning up thank you very much tamara would you like to introduce yourself sure oh, yeah pe people are wanting your website uh, Aunt, can you try pop your website in please <laughs> Tamara, go, go and tell everyone about you. Alrighty. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamara. I'm with the Thinkific team. So um, for those who do not know, Thinkific is an online course creation platform. So we work with uh, educators, entrepreneurs of all sizes and shapes to essentially create market and sell your courses online. Uh, on top of that, we run a lot of online summits and webinars and events as well. So uh, happy to be here and answer any questions. And nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> nice to meet you face to face. We've been talking as a messenger so much. It's yeah, like that's to right. Put a, nice to put a face to the name. Michelle, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself to everyone as well, please? Hello. Sure. Thank you. Um, so my name is Michelle. I am from Acceleration Partners on behalf of GoToMeeting. They're one of our clients that we've had um, on file for about a year now. And our company is all remote. And then with GoToMeeting, we're a video conferencing service. So what's really good about us is, I think in this situation of what's been going on with the world, we have those tools and flexibilities to connect with other people versus being inside the office. And we have so many different tools for different people too, whether it's individuals, professionals, or even enterprise level where you're trying to connect with say 3000 people at one time. So it's been an exciting time for us to be able to share like what we have as resources to help everybody, just because I think we have some really fantastic things. If you're someone who likes to draw on the screen, we have those kind of tools and we have ways um, to connect. We also have some trials right now for people too. So I could definitely yeah. share a link. I'll grab that link. We've got that link in as well. Let me grab that one. Got some great yeah. ones. And Michelle, nice to meet you face to face too after multiple <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Uh, so we've got GoToWebinar and GoToMeetings trial options for you guys and I'll, they're in the tools list. Everything that you possibly could want here today is actually in the tools list. All the links that you're looking for uh, in the tools list, apart from the fact that we've spoken to... Um, I didn't introduce myself well this morning because I'm expecting half of you to know who I am, which is most probably rather rude. Uh, for those of you who want to know why I've got the street cred about what I've done, I have been teaching, I've been a uh, trained teacher by trade. I went to, went to school, um, went to university, went to learn teaching, discovered marketing as I sat there. And that means that 22 years ago, I went into the world of marketing. Um, haven't left. I just came in, evolved and loved it. And I've loved this industry more because it changes regularly and I get to do stuff on a regular basis. I am the founder of Business Business Business. That was one that and gone, okay, she's done it. And we were, I hit around the 30,000 mark, just depending on how grumpy we are with the but it's a pretty supportive space. And I think in the last week, as a community, you guys have shown how amazing and supportive you are. Um, but that's my street cred. And I spend more time now teaching business owners how to market their business than doing it myself because I love seeing the wins that you absolutely get. Um, and it's a testament to what I do is, is watching my students create their own websites and do all of that sort of stuff and really get out and market their own businesses. Um, putting courses up onto Thinkific and I've got one for Sunday tomorrow. I've got something to show when I go students launch the course. <laughs> I was waiting for my expert Sunday bit. <laughs> um, so I've got something to show uh, for, for one of our students being able to launch a course. So it's really good. But what I want to do now is I want to delve into the questions. You've had a chance to get to meet all of us. There are links there. There are lots of referral links. Thank you to everyone that's been there um, moving through the process. And Doyle's got a, um, a, WhatsApp, a WhatsApp chat group as well. For those of you who want to move into that space, um, I'm going to say 
I'd love to, but my face, my, my phone is pinging enough with Facebook messages at the moment. I might give myself a week or two before I head into WhatsApp. Okay, we've got a couple of questions here at the moment, and I've got, um, go to a, a meeting with the this easy. Yes, I will get, get rid of that one. Um, yep. I think that's one for um, Omar. Omar? Yeah, we'll have a look there. Okay, I'll go for I'll go for Kim's one first. We have a web, webinar capability, but it doesn't have the perpetual replay behind firewall capability. Um, and it's coming from Kim Lambert, and Kim's also asked, um, looking at options to change. Kim, is that with Webinar Ninja, or is that? Can you pop some details into into that to let me know? Kim's also looking at a not um, options for a not-for-profit conference, which they normally run in August in case we are shifting to running online. The key needs to be availability to record live stream um, recordings, available webinars indefin indefinite um, via a paywall as well. Um, we expect because we're not for profit, we're trying to keep costs down. Um, we expect 500 viewers on any session live streaming. So. That's one question, Rob. I think that's Rob from Hey Summit, maybe one that you can have a look at and maybe tomorrow you can look at from the Thinkific point of view and if anyone wants to pitch into it, I, you know I've run the Skill Summit via Thinkific before, but I'm, Hey Summit wasn't an option to us then, so I'll have a chat to Rob as well. Live? Yep, you're live. You can oh, sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi, Kim. Uh, so uh, definitely from the point of view of, uh, you know, managing both the connections if you're using specific types of uh, webinar platforms and then managing the recordings after uh, so that uh, you can control access to who gets the uh, recordings and make sure that those are behind the paywall. That's definitely something that, that people do on Hey Summit all the time. So for example, if you were using something like Zoom, um, you might be able to have the live session running through Zoom uh, and then the, uh, the replay uh, on that same talk page. Um, that's uh, pretty straightforward. You can have multiple tickets and, and set up different types of permissions and all that good stuff. So Omar, Omar she's also just said, because it's a, a particular, I think, works with Gurban and Ninja as well. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong throughout the no, process. No. But um, Kim was also saying that most places um, need to have a replay, uh, most, need to have people register for a replay to begin with. That's most probably where I say you're a little bit different in that point that you can have evergreen webinars that people can lock, register for down the track and pay yes. for. Yeah, so platform. a couple options here. So with Webinar Ninja, when you create a webinar, we automatically uh, create the replay for you. So we record it, there's nothing to press. Um, we create the re replay page for you. So automatically, anybody who registers gets an email that says, here's your replay and it's secure access. Only those who have registered get access to that webinar. And there's nothing for you to do. It's just the replay is there, you get sent to that page, they watch it, they can see the chat, they see the questions, all that kind of stuff. Um, now, if, uh, for example, this uh, webinar is over, the live session is over, but somebody stumbles on this link online, like on, on Facebook or something like that, and they miss the live session, if the replay is available, you could also allow them to register or watch the replay. So automatically, it becomes an evergreen webinar for you so that you can go ahead and register. It'll, if they go to the link, it'll say, you know, this live session is over, but you can register for the replay. So they can go ahead and register for the replay and watch that video. Um, inside of Webinar Ninja, we allow you to create all different kinds of webinars. Um, so just, just for those who don't know, Webinar Ninja takes care of all the marketing and the moving parts of the webinars, and it takes care of the live streaming and the video and the recording and all that kind of stuff. So most of our users that come to us um, are just looking for a solution to just get it done. Like, I, I don't want to deal with all these moving parts. Yep. Um, so what we do uh, best in terms of, is that it's an all-in-one solution. So if you want to run a live webinar, we have the option. If you want to run an automated webinar, meaning that you can use an external video that you can upload or you can use a past replay and make an automated webinar, which could be on demand or scheduled. And from there, uh, you can charge if you'd like. We have a Stripe connection, so you can charge for admission for that. Uh, you can run a summit or a series type of webinar if you want to, and you can make it a combination of like some live sessions, some recorded sessions, or all recorded or all live. Um, and then we have a different kind of webinar called hybrid, which is basically a recorded video 
but you're live in the chat and the questions if, uh, and a lot of our software companies use that so they can run demos uh, that they've kind of nailed and uh, they want to kind of be in there. Um, so uh, it's all up to you what you want to do. Um, one of the things that uh, you could do inside of Webinar Ninja in terms of the replay is you could set how, how long you want to keep this replay for. You can yeah, offer yeah. no replay, you can offer you know, two days, three days, or open forever. Um, so that's up to you. You also have the option of publishing it private or public. Um, if it's a private thing, like it's a paid thing for your, co your like it's a coaching client, something like that. Um, what's really cool about our private webinars is that we use some genie magic that my engineers know way better than me. Uh, we basically tokenize the links so where it could read um, where the, the link is being sent. So basically what you can, if I, get a link to a webinar in my inbox and I click it, it can recognize if it's coming from that inbox and if that person actually registered and paid for it and only that person will have access. So there's no password for them because the password is not really secure. People can share that password. People can share those links. Um, so even if they share the link, it will recognize that this person is not registered and will not get access. So um, yeah, so that's, that's in a nutshell kind of uh, how we kind of come up with those solutions. So no wonder Clive's so excited about what you've got come to, coming to offer. <laughs> so question for me, and this most probably works. So can we live stream to Facebook using Webinar Ninja? We don't at the moment. We don't flat, uh, live stream to Facebook or um, to YouTube or things like that. Um, yep. We had a, a bit of a debate in our company about if we wanted to offer this just because uh, we actually um, believe it's better to just keep it on the webinar platform yep. because of the distractions on, on social media. Um, but uh, we've gotten so much demand from our customers that, you know, and our customers are our number one stakeholders. So uh, we are putting it on the roadmap. So it should be coming uh, later this year. Thank you. I, I will have a look further when we can do live stream as well, because <laughs> that's, that's where my impact and my reach is, is obviously inside yeah. the Facebook community. Um, Michelle, is it something that GoToWebinar can offer as well, the opportunity to have? We don't have it on Facebook, we have it on YouTube. Um, yep. And it's, it's pre-recorded content that you could put on there. So unfortunately, we don't have that live streaming on Facebook as okay. well. What about the option for people to be able to run a, a, a replay summit type session on GoToWebinar? Yeah, we definitely have that. Um, so we have the links that will go. We also have API integration for a lot of things. So we do have a lot of those higher social channels. I think YouTube was one of the first ones we started with. Yep. And then we have rolled out with Facebook. So those opportunities are there to use for our tools. Now, Tamara, I ran my first, and Rob was a part of it, my first online summit when we ran our first online summit via Thinkific. So we actually registered with the school. We had our replays for everyone attending. We had a Facebook chat group. We had me going live in Facebook every day. <laughs> it was lovely. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it doesn't make me tired at all. Um, but we ran that summit, summit via Thinkific. Now, we also had a replay library for most of people that we could attend that, and that also like the control freak in me likes the watch time stats. And I know that I, we can get that through Webinar Ninja, but, and you think if you are running your own sessions as well, would you like to have a bit of a chat about how people could use Thinkific to run a similar summit? Absolutely. So yeah, it's exciting how uh, we also internally use Thinkific for running online summits um, and really kind of taking the concept of a conference, a physical conference and translating it online. So also having the ability to uh, gate it as well. So making sure that you're having people enroll in it. Um, you have the ability to separate uh, and kind of build it out in a way that you're separate, separating sessions per day. So maybe if you have um, different days, different topics, different themes. You can separate content out in that way. Uh, you can also run kind of live sessions as well as um, recorded sessions if you want to have a mix of that or just in general if you have a live session and then you want to save that and um, uh, upload it as a replay, you can certainly do that too. So kind of creating a really uh, cohesive online experience for students. Uh, uh, we also like to use like Facebook groups too on top of that. So kind of having super uh, easy links for people to reach, uh, you know, Facebook if you want a little bit more engagement, uh, as well as the opportunity to add discussions in those specific sessions as well. So kind of keeping discussions within um, sessions are possible too. So yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, Kim asked, can you charge for it? Yes, in Webinar Ninja you can, in Thinkific you can, in Hey Summit you can, uh, and, I'm, and we go to me, go to webinar, we announced, because we do the article on it earlier this week, that they can now take payments. So yes, by using a payment processor like Stripe, um, I'm pretty sure everyone's using Stripe for this one, or PayPal, 
um, you can charge people to, to get access and have replay access. Um, and what did you learn about taking an event? Because this is, this is quite, taking a face-to-face -face event last night and actually turning it into, because we literally announced it on the Thursday and then on the Friday, it's like, okay, we've got to take this offline. Yeah, it's, um, it seemed like it was a bit more uh, last minute than it really was. We'd sort of been working on the plan for a little while, um, mm -hmm. a little while, probably two weeks. Let's be, let's be real, but um, that's a little while. We, we're that's also a little while. <laughs> lucky enough that we've been running programs um, remotely for creators spread all across different Asian countries at the same time. Um, running them from Australia. So we, that those groups are only about 20 people. I think last night we had about 130 something regoed and sorry, register, register, yeah, let's okay. not get all locker and Australian on everyone. Um, and then about 60 something turn up. Turn up. Um, the main thing, like, yeah, yeah we used uh, Livestorm, but like, um, in terms of change, or I'm not the technologically advanced uh, person there. Um, all of the platforms we looked at, like Webinar Ninja, except they all looked great and, and performed yep. well. I, the key thing for us is probably how do we take that live experience um, and bring it into the virtual world as much as possible. So um, normally for these types of events, we have about 100 to 150 people in a room. Um, there's a bit of a buzz and an energy. It's like how do you bring that to something like this? Um, so we add extra resources into having people in the chat um, to really drive people being engaged rather than passive because if you're sitting at home and with an internet connection and in Australia it was the very first footy game for the year and maybe the only one. Uh, <laughs> so, and you can play it against that well. Yeah, I don't know. So there's a lot of distractions going on. So like putting a lot of um, energy and, and resource like into um, keeping people engaged and using things like um, the ability to put people up on stage to ask questions and interact. Um, so like we, we spend a, probably most of the time and effort less on tech and platforms and more on thinking about how do we translate this over to the online world and sort of, you have to level up. You have to like, it, yeah. it's, it seems easier to deliver something from home or from, you know, I went into our podcast studio, but it was, um, you've got to step it up and, and step it up. And it's a different level of energy when you're presenting to camera all the time than when you get that face to face connection. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned is to almost smile at and make eye contact with myself is the best connection that I can make in that area. And that mean, might mean that I'm not looking directly at the camera and it might mean I'm annoying people, but I think the information should hopefully make it translate through in the rest of that area. And the one thing I'll say about last night from my point of view, which was really cool when we came in, was the music. That they had music <laughs> playing in the background because it was like going to a changer event. And because I've been to the face-to-face -face events, it was like there. But next time we should have some more snack warnings so that we can all start showing off our snacks. You know? Yeah, sorry. We actually, I but, did have a glass of wine with me, though. You would have been impressed. <laughs> the, the snack idea was way too late. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, um, yeah, you know, like things like how do you bring that feeling and energy. So music was important. You know, I, I got, uh, uh, I just before, like 15 minutes before it started, Uber Eats roll, rolled up with a pizza and I had- So should I have them sponsor. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we, you know, we, we were sort of, we had guest speakers and we were, it, it was too late to think of like, let's get yeah. the same thing delivered to everybody. But um, yeah, like things like the music, like it's a, it's a, it's a very, very small thing, but it sort of sets the tone. It made a massive difference last night. Um, and my, I've always had that, I, I hate the awkward moment before a, a, an online session starts where there's sort of like five, ten minutes of like, oh, hey, everyone, we're just about to get started. <laughs> and like, you could really lose people there as well you and can. sort of set yeah, exactly. the tone for the night. So, yeah, and that's something we do at our live in-person events. We have music pumping. We're meeting everyone. We're like hanging out, finding out who the hell everyone is in the room. Um, I mean, we work in YouTube and YouTube creators, so we're allowed to sort of be, a, you know, have fun and let our hair down and, and be a bit silly. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's our big thing is how to level up for the engagement as much as possible. I'd love to just um, jump in here if you don't mind. And, yeah, go for it. But um, uh, one of the strategies we like to um, share with our users in terms of the first minute or two of the webinar, you're, you're right. A lot of people feel a bit awkward. Should I wait for people to come in, people trickling in? Do I give shout outs? What do I do? Um, so one of the strategies we do, and um, 
you know, I, that I, I'm also a former educator. I used to be a teacher for 13 years. And one of the things we all can relate to is the first day of school. The first day of school, we walk into the classroom. First period class is, you know, Miss McCormick's class. Uh, and Miss McCormick just has no plan. She's just sitting at her desk. You walk in, you just kind of mosey in, and you're just like, okay, I'm going to coast in this class, Miss McCormick, and we're going to walk all over, right? Yep. And you go to second period of classes, Mr. Johnson's class, Mr. Johnson's class, he greets you at the door, says, hey, welcome, Omar. Thank you for coming to class. There's an assignment at the board. Here's your seat number. And all of a sudden, your impression's totally different. Um, so I use that example uh, to show people that you need to have a plan as soon as people jump into your webinar that they're on task. So they automatically feel like this is not going to be, you know, a waste of time and people are, uh, you know, I'm, I, don't, I can look at Facebook for the first five minutes or whatever it is or, or, uh, yeah, or exactly. Email. So one of the things that we like to say is number one is put them on task. So I actually like to put it in the email notifications beforehand and say, when you jump into the room, uh, introduce yourself, tell us where you're coming from, but also tell me what would be a win for you today. Like, why did you sign up? Um, that way you can know how you can deliver specific value. And then at the end of the webinar, you can cap and just say, Hey, we delivered one, two, three, four, all that kind of stuff. The other thing is that when they come in, uh, in that beginning, uh, and you're, and people are trickling in, um, I, I like to kind of just first introduce uh, and set up expectations and say, Hey, today we're going to be learning this. This is where you ask questions. This is where there's a poll. Uh, and as people start coming in, um, I like to do a little bit of engagement in the, in the, in the chat. So a lot, most people, they just kind of say, Hey, Mary, Hey, John, Hey, whatever. Um, and that, that's a little, that's good that you're engaging, but try to go a little deeper. So like, Hey, John, I see that you, you live in the West village. I used to live in the West village. I used to live on top of moon falafels. Ever have moon falafels before and just kind of give some context and it just allows to make it a little bit more engaging and allows people to feel like, okay, this is uh, something that's a little bit more, uh, a little different from other webinars. So that first couple of minutes, giving somebody, putting them on task, giving them something to do, and also just giving you, you a chance to engage with them is a good chance. And don't be afraid to just get started in the content and people feel like, oh shoot, I better be on time next time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> If you attend one of my webinars, you'll notice that we don't fluff around for five minutes. We get, so we get right into it. <laughs> All my marketing circle members will say, don't be late. She's going to start anyway. <laughs> Such a prep teacher in me. Um, honey, when, in particular, when it comes to repurpose, and this is most probably something we, do, we need to up our game with a little bit here in the Ennevar Group area, is actually taking our webinars and, and breaking them down into snippets and then using tools like yours to actually promote what we do. And then Dan, it sort of fits in with quick here too, of being able to, to have things lo logoed and that sort of stuff. So I would like to throw this particular section to you. And then we've got actually a really cool question that is um, it's gonna be good to get some answers for. Um, obviously, Rob, I, uh, when Rob from TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy Rob, Rob, uh, when we talk about tube, talk about repurposing things, I talk about optimization and, and make, using tools like TubeBuddy to make sure you've got your keywords right, to make sure you've got all your content right. But the next biggest thing is about making sure that those videos are captioned and they're easy for people to, to integrate with and that you're using, making the most of the content that you already have and not rehashing to rehash it over and over again. So putting it into snippets and those sorts of things. And that's where I think both quick and uh, repurpose come into their own, being able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a fantastic idea. Like you want to take content that you've already created. You want to take highlights of your webinar, your training, uh, whether it's live, whether it's recorded, it doesn't matter. Right? You have all this content you've already created. So you know, the key here is to kind of break it down to basically takeaways, you know, one minute ish takeaways. I would say one minute if you can, and uh, just chop them up into little clips and get them out on different social platforms because you don't know who, who you're attracting. Right? You're attracting different audiences maybe your primary audience is on Facebook, uh, but you know, you have a whole separate audience that's living in on Instagram or living on other social platforms. Uh, and another cool trick is to take some of your recordings and turn them into podcasts. Right? You can turn some of the, you know, not every piece of content video can be turned into an audio podcast, but uh, you opportunity to turn some of your content or, you know, maybe small clips of your content, turn them into audio, and then you kind of narrate over it or introduce it and turn that into a podcast episode. Yeah. So the idea being here is you want to take content you've already created, uh, that you know has value, pull out the key takeaways. It's, it does take a little bit of time, right? You're going to reviewing your content, but it's still a lot less time than creating content from scratch over again, especially after you've delivered, let's say an hour webinar or an hour 
you know, live training. Yeah, exactly. So definitely take advantage. And then the key is these short, keep them short and also keep them visually appealing and attractive. Like, you know, have the captions. If you have the opportunity, repurpose does this, has a quick does it as well. There's a lot of tools out there that will burn in the captions right into your videos. And by doing that, you're allowing people to watch without having audio. And that's key. People are, uh, well, no one's at work now, but you know, in general, people are out and about <laughs> doing their thing um, and they don't have a chance to put the audio on all the time. So if you have captions burnt in those clips, it allows people to engage with your content without having the audio on. Uh, uh, Linda, uh, yeah. just another point. Um, we, um, so we, we also have a team of virtual assistants and, um, and, uh, they do this a lot and just in terms of coming up with different ideas for, for, uh, customers who want to maybe, um, maximize their content. We've, we've seen about 1500 summits since, uh, last, um, June or, or, or so. Um, uh, but, uh, so th- th- there are some interesting things that, that you can do when you're engaging with like your speakers, when you're talking about courses or summits, um, just in that, in, in those initial calls. So like we've seen some pretty cool uh, efficient uses of time. Like if you're going to be recording someone's presentation, let's say you're not doing everything live uh, and the presentation is only going to be 45 minutes, book the call for an hour and a half. And then uh, after the presentation, um, you know, uh, then record a, a podcast episode, uh, you know, a 20 minute podcast episode with them right then then record a, a five minute uh, preview about what it is they're going to talk about and record a, a 30 second overview. And you have, you know, just some content to start off with um, just, just uh, uh, before you even, you even start. So we've, we've uh, seen uh, some pretty innovative stuff like that that make really good use of time. Really good. I think from a, a, a deep strategic level, the, the, the creation side of things, one thing being efficient with your contents, another, but when using something like quick or effectively what you do is you take the narrative out of the video content that you're creating and yes you can repurpose it and yes you can use that for you know all your other social media channels but when you go deeper it it actually becomes a core driver of additional traffic towards your core platform so a lot of what we do with with clients that we work with and influencers and and the brand ambassadors that we've got on on our lists is they have predominantly one core platform. Yeah. So they have one core platform, which is one long form core core platform. They have a core short form platform. So it might be like YouTube is the long form and short form would be Instagram as an example. But when you have like say a YouTube video that you create, if you'd get the captions out of that and you can take, you know, a 15 second snippet and you can burn in those captions into the 15 seconds, you upload that to Instagram, that can be an Instagram story. But it's it's one of those things where you won't necessarily want to take the burned in captions and put that onto something like LinkedIn, unless you're really, really sensitive about the brand, because on LinkedIn, you want to take the same 15 second snippet, upload it on LinkedIn in and embed the SRT file for that 15 second snippet, because then the SRT gets indexed at the back end with the algorithm. Yeah. You know, and the same sort of thing applies to every single social media platform you've got. So when you take that one YouTube video, you can have a, say, a 60 second snippet of it, stick it on Instagram. That then gets shared into your story that gets shared into IGTV. The, the same video without captions, stick into LinkedIn with LinkedIn's inbuilt captioning in you know, from the SRT file. You take the same, say, a week later, you publish that YouTube video onto IGTV, stick that again into your captions with or without the burned in captions. And the whole, whole thing becomes like a repurposing cycle. But the, the core point of it isn't to have visibility necessarily on all of those social media platforms. It's actually to drive the traffic back to increase the watch time on your core platform, which is the entire point. So if you've got all of that traffic all pointing towards your long form, whilst you're nurturing all the other social media platforms that you've got, which is great, they are not necessarily best place to being your, your focus of your time. They are purely traffic generation kind of sources to push up the watch time in your core platform, i.e. YouTube or whatever platform you want to choose. Yeah. And that increases the algorithm triggers, which increases your view time, which increases your reach, which increases how many times you get suggested and so on. Um, so we use it predominantly, certainly from the influencer world, as a 
an optimization tool to drive traffic, not so much create content for the other platforms and keep them populated, if that helps. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. And, and look, it is a very good part of, of where we sit within this journey. And Rob, you, and, and you both say the same thing when it comes to YouTube. As much as I'm a Facebook girl first, <laughs> it, it's about, but I'm getting there. I'm getting some YouTube stuff. I'm doing okay. I'm getting milestones on Tube, buddy. I'm happy. Um, it's about it's about moving your way through. Look, see, give me a bright sticker. I'm happy. Uh, the teacher in me. Um, it's about making sure that you're, you're talking where your audience is primarily too. Because there yeah. is no point in producing YouTube or Instagram content if your audience doesn't hang out there and vice versa or Facebook or LinkedIn. And yes, the SRT file is key to everything, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, it's what Google indexes. They cannot index the words or the burnt stuff that's on the video. They can only index the text in the SRT file. So please do the SRT file every time. Yeah, and one other thing just to add to that, um, just for me quickly, is <clears throat> what we what we find some people doing it, I'll be honest, it does great on me at times. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who will say, upload your video to YouTube, just take the SRT out and you've got it. It's pretty much accurate. It's okay. Because um, YouTube will caption your content for free, but its accuracy isn't overly great. Um, I think it's anyway between 50 to 65% of the research we've looked at. Um, but where that's a problematic is that you can get free captions, you can have inaccurate captioning done. You know, our captioning is between, I think it's about 90 to 96% right. accurate. <laughs> does it? Yes, it gets my name right. It's about the only <laughs> platform that does. <laughs> it's a win. It doesn't get LinkedIn right. LinkedIn, <laughs> it doesn't know because it's not in the dictionary. Um, <laughs> But that's just a side point of one of the things. Okay, that it'll get end of a right. There you go. Well, there you go. Um, but the thing is, when a lot of people who suggest just get it done for free off of YouTube and stick it into your video, it's fine. Actually, now there's even less um, of a good suggestion to make because the way that algorithms have changed within Google search, especially on platforms like Google and YouTube, because obviously YouTube is the same sort of thing, mm. is that they now use something called NLP. So it's natural language processing in terms of their search algorithms. So if you're asking like back in the day, you were to have a blog content that said how to choose a great camera, for example, you know, now if you, if you have like how to choose a great camera, what's the great cameras to choose? You know, how do you choose a good camera? What great cameras are out there yeah. for 2020? All that kind of stuff. You'll be indexed for all of it because natural language processing will rank you based on the intent behind the search, not the actual specific key phrases of the search. Exactly. So the importance of your captioning being accurate, really it means the difference between, you know, if there's two videos that got similar watch time, similar click through rates, you know, similar abandon rates, the thing that's really going to make yours be ranked above someone else is the efficiency and the accuracy of your indexing and the efficiency and accuracy of your, the actual key phrase and everything within what you've said and how that looks within the algorithm at the back end. And if that's not accurate, then you're going to lose in that situation. Now, Dan, you can answer this question while you're here. Because oh, I refer to SRT files as gobbledygook. <laughs> what okay. is an SRT file? And then Georgina, I know you've been really uh, patient. I want to allow you to talk and then we've got one final question. Uh, so I can't for the life remember what SRT stands for. I will have to slap myself later text, for that. Isn't it? Something like that. Subrit yeah. text. It, <laughs> um, it's text that talks to Google to index and time and space. Um, yeah. And you know, <laughs> what's, what's SRT? Like I said, I, I don't bother. With, like I said, I don't bother with the gobbledygook techno babble. Of that stuff I mean, it's a, it's a thing. It does what it does, um, and that's what it is. But yeah, like in a short nutshell, it puts the words onto the video at the right time. I think that's the it's technical. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Technically, yeah. You don't need to, you don't need to know technically what, what the hell that means. It doesn't no. help you unless it's part of your job to know that. Within milliseconds, it makes sure that the text shows up at the right time, basically. Yeah. Georgina has popped her hand down. Okay, we've got, a, by all means, guys, we've, still got, we've got 20 minutes left to go if you want to ask us more questions. But I really love this question. I think it's going to be a nice little, nice little one to look at it. Um, 
what advice would the panel give Ari to, uh, not to do? With, uh, sorry, what advice would it? Sorry, what advice would the panel give Ari delivering a course and event uh, to clients who are not familiar with tech or even using it for the first time? So no, no tech, technology. And then I'm going to ask you what you wouldn't do, because uh, that's what I thought I read that question as. So what would you? What would advice would you give to someone who's starting this out? No technology, never built a website, never done anything. And they're starting. Hanny, we'll start with you. Oh, all right. No pressure here. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're delivering a course, um, if you're not familiar with tech, I mean, you need you need some kind of tech to deliver it. So start with something that's simple. Just just go live on Facebook. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's the simplest thing. Grab your, grab your phone, just go live. Not You've been doing some very good live series with your with the repurposed members and that sort of stuff with and even just what's coming up next and the new tool and the new training uh, via mm -hmm. Facebook group, which is really good. Yeah, yeah. Start a Facebook group. If you don't have a Facebook group, it's okay. Just just go live on Facebook. That's probably the easiest way if you don't want to learn tech. That, that would be kind of my my quick win. Yep. There's there's a lot of tools, if I may, Linda, that you can actually use that are very, very easy and look for that as well. Like Hanny said, uh, start with something simple. You don't have to reinvent it. You don't have to develop something. You don't have to get, you know, programmers to program you some yeah. stuff, right? Find a platform that kind of meets your needs. Um, there's hundreds out there that all of the, the amazing panelists here all have a tool, a platform um, that people can use. So that's the first start is, is finding out what's there, what's available, and then using it. Having yeah. content, having ideas, having the strategy behind it so you know kind of where you're going as well. To add yeah, to Linda. Penny's oh. point. Sorry. Yeah, Linda, I'll just, I'll just jump in. It's just like, yeah, don't um, just just try to understand your audience and what they what their pain points are, because don't try to like build the whole funnel and be fancy with follow up emails and like closing cart emails and all that stuff in the very beginning, because you're just you're going to get frustrated and you're going to be you're not going to focus on the right thing, which is really understanding the pain point of your audience and then delivering the content and bringing in the right partners and all that stuff the next yeah. time around. Um, but yeah, just keep it simple. Yep. Get, it, get it out there, yep. right? Get it out there. Prolific beats perfect. You don't have time to kind of get everything perfect. It's like, well, this, did, this wasn't perfect. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's <laughs> kind of what you have to three do. in the morning. <laughs> on a bed to, right from my phone. <laughs> exactly. You have to think on your feet now, right? That that's, that's the, there's a really a deep city seated sense of urgency here that you need if you're helping businesses help them if yep. you're a business you kind of got to make a shift right now that big wave is coming uh and if you're not you know even on a little surfboard you're going to go a lot further than if you just go ah exactly now um i want to touch base on both webinar ninja and think you from this particular area because i do know both of these softwares very very well um and michelle it's been a while since i used go to it used to be corporate world day so please chime in if you can do this Thinkific, you can have a landing page built for your course and the pre-sale component of it up and running. Well, Patty and I did our very first webinar inside 30 minutes. And that was before Thinkific was so much easier to build a landing page and that on your website. So you can get in there, run a free school, get the tomorrow join in, join in by all means. You can get in there, have a um have a landing page up and running, connect Stripe, connect PayPal, mm -hmm. and be going, okay, well, the course is going to launch on this date. And this is what I'm going to teach you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Let me jump in really quickly here. So yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, um, we, our, our platform's pretty intuitive, but more than that, we have a ton of resources that can really support you. And I think it was mentioned in the comments that like really kind of leveraging the tools that each platform has put out there. So for example, I think if we have a knowledge base with an article for literally every feature with instructions, with little videos and so on. And on top of that, a support team that's ready to help as well. So really kind of leveraging the support team as much as you can can. Um, at Thinkific, we do email, we do call, we can schedule calls. There's a lot of different kind of venues and opportunities to really kind of connect and get the support that you need so you don't get overwhelmed. And if you follow the link that we've got today, you get VIP support. That's right. That's right. That's what Tamara's given you all this <laughs> today. Uh, so inside the tools link and inside the chat multiple times, I'll pop that link in, but make sure that you, you get in there. Um, Omar, I built a webinar for Clive and Clive can build webinar landing pages that I don't hate inside Webinar Ninja. So that means that it's got to be pretty easy. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's the reason why most people use this is because they, they want something that's easy. So um, literally, you can create a webinar in 10 seconds um, and you'll have everything done, landing pages, your thank you page, your replay page, your email notifications, and then you can e edit anything you want later on and save it as default so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, I do want to just uh, step in and put my educator hat on and say, the, you know, the tools are really important. Um, you know, the support, what Tamara mentioned is so important. You know, we have, a, you know, a chat right inside the app so you can chat with support and they can walk you step by step if you, if you need it. But the most important thing is the actual content. That's the make or break. The tech, you know, I, I, there's courses that I bought on CD. You know, I, I, I bought courses that are on a, on a landing page with YouTube videos embedded, no, you know, kind of yep. special kind of uh, membership software or anything like that because the content was so good. If your content is great and it shines, people will fight to get to it. They'll figure it out, you know, so just know that. Don't think like the tech is going to hold you back. Really, if you focus on the content, you focus on the value you're giving your audience, uh, the tech is going to kind of fade in the background. You'll be all right. Yes, it's actually such a good thing. And, uh, you know, Sean Cannell brought up in the other day on YouTube on his hit one, show us one of your first YouTube videos. <laughs> if you look at one of my first YouTube videos, one of my first Facebook Live videos, our first course that we delivered on Think Thinkific Clive when we were t testing it out, where you were literally on white, white PowerPoint presentations over the top just to get this course done. It's going, it gets better and you do get better. But what matters to the audience as, Omar said is the content and the fact that you're actually sharing good stuff and you you know if you've got good stuff they will come to, come to you for it. We've got a couple more questions in the chat thread um, here as well. Rob, I know that you talk about running good good content and you've been doing heaps of live streams with you, buddy, at the moment. Just while I read these questions, do you want to share a couple of tips because I know from the Thinkific side of you, you and I've worked together on a couple of things. Me, Rob, or Rob? You uh, both, Rob. Oh, me. Okay. <laughs> but you roll awesome. back. Copy Rob now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, when actually I was going to touch on repurposing, kind of going back, I had a thought on that. Is that I think uh, yes, keywords, tags, you know, for YouTube, it's great. You got to get found. YouTube is owned by Google, so everybody knows that. So it's a search engine. It's it's powerful to get discovered that way. But um, a lot of videos don't get watched all the way. So if you're creating a lot of tutorial content, for example, I think our audience here creates probably tutorial content the most, is that let's say you have five tips, most people won't get to your fourth or fifth tip. But if you're gonna be repurposing those into mini uh, micro content that you share on social media, then you can actually have people be exposed to that tip or that content. Um, and then that way, it actually helps you build out more content or a course even um, because then you're going to be able to understand what is uh, what your audience uh, interest is so um, yeah so repurposing is very important we do that a lot a lot of our partners do that um, a lot of big youtubers do that so you mentioned sean uh sean tannell he's a amazing youtuber he just hit a million subscribers and mm -hmm. if you watch his instagram uh, if you watch his uh his facebook like he's he's pushing out new content on youtube but he's repurposing it on yeah. all the other channels. In very short, time, so. short, sharp tips, and then short, you know, short, go watch the yeah. YouTube video. Like as Dan was saying before, put it, make, driving it to his main source. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, especially this, these like these summit videos. Of course, if you're allowed to use it outside of the summit, then you can put it on YouTube. You can create micro content out of it, and then it just spurs on more content spurs on more uh, courses and products in the back end as well because you can understand your audience better so now Doyle I'm going to talk about summit content and it's a really good one I do want to talk, talk out to everyone there's lots of um, gifts and that being put up into the chat and I will make sure that they go into the replay video as well um, when we did the first we, you've done two small business skill summits with me now yeah, um, two. Two. We did a live stream. We did a B live. Remember, we did the B live with you, Lauren and I. <laughs> so we did a B live live stream TV about what what it, what we were going into. Um, we then had we had each presenter do videos. So they did an introduction video that we used on both YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and then we used on the day of their presentation as well. Um, it's all about looking at making the most. Out if you're gonna if you're gonna run a summit and I, I got a ma massive amount of presenters and I even say this when I'm face to face guest speaking would you like me to do a promo video 
if you're going to have come and, come and have me speak, then you might as well use my audience to attract people to come through. So when you're looking at your summits, ask your guest speakers to just spend five minutes in front of the phone, in front of the computer, saying, hey, this is what we're going to be covering. We're really, really excited. Now, I use YouTube, in all honesty, to drive people to my courses. I will teach you one five-minute marketing trick, and then I want you to go join the marketing circle. And that's key, are, Linda, yeah. is that you, you really have to get out there. You mentioned that uh, at the beginning of this, is that, look, the people who are kind of sitting by and just kind of seeing if they can ride this out, the answer is you can't ride this out. You have to do exactly, Linda, what you're saying. You have to get out there. You have to get your content out there. You have to tell your story and, and make that. it easy. Make it simple, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need a learning platform today. What you need today is some ideas behind your content and how you deliver your value. And that's what you can start working on. Put it in a short five minute or last one minute Facebook Live. Start there, grow with it. Um, it's like anything, building a house, it takes some time. You have to start with a strong foundation. And if you've got that foundation, that's what's going to move you forward. It's not waiting. That's not going to work. You know, you have to do something now. And what can you do? You can talk about your business. You can, again, talk about how you deliver value. That's what people are listening for right now. Um, Doyle's offered his PDF and if you don't grab the PDF and I don't have your book here, it's sitting over on the other side of my office, uh, but definitely make sure that you grab a copy of the PDF. It's a good place to start. Um, ah, there you go. You have your own props. <laughs> Hang on. I've got my, my props are here. They're in I've a small my, box now. My other prop, <laughs> my planet, my globe. <laughs> now, the other thing that I wanted to touch base on is Lisa's just mentioned that if people aren't tech savvy and it kind of climbs into the other question about, you know, what we should suggest where people, most of the people have limited tech abilities. Now, the reality of it is, guys, and I'm going to answer this most probably in the way because it's stuff that I get asked all the time is my people aren't tech smart. Give your people some credit. They can open up a link. Okay. Because if you're using Webinar Ninja or you're using Thinkific, once they've opened the link, it's the next component. Now, you might want to use a, you know, not, not technologically heavy platform um, so that it's mobile friendly and all of that sort of stuff. But most of the platforms now, um, <laughs> says, if I can learn this stuff, anyone can ask Linda. <laughs> True. <laughs> Um, but, and, you know, even to the point where, you know, Clive is so much a face-to-face -face person to take him online has taken a little while to get us there and get him doing video. Um, but it's come down to the point of he now understands the power of it, but give your people the credit that they know how to follow a link. And if they don't know how to follow the link, then just record, this is how you navigate your way around the process. But remember the tech that you are using the back end is completely different to what your students get as a, a user experience. Rob, can, I think sure you guys have got something to add to that with the Hey Summit side of things. Yeah, just I mean, just in general, like, when when you're creating a course or you're creating a summit or, or or anything like that, you are creating a product, and with with any product, you should be understanding who you're building the product for, but also what their journey is like and 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 what. Um, they're going to be looking for and what their their capabilities are. So you know whether it's you're worried about bandwidth. You know if, if for example you know that your your attendees are um, ha might have low uh, uh, slower internet connections, then maybe an asynchronous type um, method or product to to serve them might be better than a live one. Um, if you're if you're looking for uh, something that uh, needs to be um, you know, uh, having that kind of live interaction because of the format that you're delivering it, but you want it um, accessible to people at uh, all different, you know, time zones, the stuff that, you know, Webinar Ninja can do, for example, might be a really great reason why you choose that. So I think sometimes we see people that get super excited about all the wonderful things that they can do and all the wonderful tools that they can do, that they obsess about that a little bit too much and they try and game every little thing. Um, and they end up not actually going back and serving the 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 people that they're that they're looking to serve because it's just too complex or there's too many moving parts or things don't talk to each other. And whereas if you if you made maybe a, a few compromises in terms of the brilliance of the product that you're building, um, you end up with a much simpler thing that serves your your community a heck of a lot better. So one of the things that we suggest that people do, um, regardless of if they're using us or or something else, is make sure that you're testing it, make sure that you're going through the process 
um, make sure that you understand what the customer journey is like. Uh, your, you know, your, your, uh, the people who you're serving, um, just so that you can anticipate some of these, uh, some of these questions, and then just make sure that you're, uh, that you're, 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 you're focused on inclusive support. So making sure that people feel, uh, feel empowered to say, you know what, I actually don't understand how to do this, or I don't understand how to access this, and and you know, uh, treat that as okay, um, because you know we all don't know how to do something. And, uh, and just approaching that will mean that your, your attendees, especially if they're not very tech savvy, um, will be more adventurous because they'll kind of be cel celebrated if they, if they mess up. And, and we find that those, those kind of um, uh, events or, or uh, mentalities uh, produce, you know, really good and engaging um, uh, products. One of my most watched YouTube video guys is how to find your social media links. It's actually second nature to me. And but just, can I... Can I yeah. jump in that one a little bit? Um, yeah, go for it. So I, just something about a bit about my background, just to give context. So I come from very much an operational background. I mean, I'm, I'm a CMO right now and my webcam's frozen. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm a CMO right now, but I've been growing, scaling private equity and venture capital back businesses for many, many years, um, primarily from an operational level. And that's been from anything from a a standing start all the way up to nine figure valuation businesses and exit processes. So, you know, quite heavy stuff. And we don't scale those businesses through adding complexity. We scale them by removing it. And there's a, there's a deep psychology behind like the psychology of overwhelm and, you know, procrastination and that being a stress response. And, you know, it, it's far too much to go into now. But one of the things that I've been mentoring startups on for many years as well is that actually when you look at systems and platforms, um, I, I sometimes find it easier to actually look at it as lines of communication or action. Yeah. And that, that's how I kind of explain it to people. So if you think of your systems as being just the same as a conversation, conversation between two people or two systems or two action points or two processes, however you want to look at it, between two points, there's just two, yes, it's basically one line. Between three points, there's three lines. You know, us on this call right now, it's like, what, like 10, 11 of us, that's like 40, 45 to 55 lines of communication. You know, if you have, say, 14 different systems and processes within your business, that's actually 91 lines of communication. So the more you add, the more complex it all becomes. And if you try and have a, a collaborative conversation between 14 people nothing gets spoken about nothing gets outputted from it it all gets really complicated and everyone just gets stressed out or bored or they just walk away or they they can't be bothered to carry on so when you're scaling that your business on that level with systems or actions or whatever whatever it may be the more you add and the more that scales the more you will get overwhelmed and the less you will do and it's just human nature the only way you can get around that is either put more cost into your business by getting help to actually alleviate the stresses that you've actually put on yourself in the first place. And obviously that lowers your um, revenue streams. It lowers your profit margins. It creates more risk for you and your business and everything else as well. Or you reduce that complexity and actually like the quick as an example, there's six people in the business. We can scale quite happily to nine figures with six people in the business. Yeah, you know, we don't need more at all. Um, and it's all about making things simple, not more complex. Completely agree. Michelle, did you have something to add? Yeah, I was just definitely going with part of the testing of your user. I think it's good to get a field of your friends or someone in the business that can test it from those that are very tech savvy to those that you feel might not be tech savvy. Yeah. Go through that user experience and find the tools that need to kind of have more of a highlight. So maybe that's ensuring you tell your audience that audio is included. It's a simple process of clicking a button. Is this something where you can control the feature so there's not audio issues in the background? You could turn that person that's noisy off if you're doing something online because content's great, but if you don't have people engaged and you're having those tech issues, you're going to lose someone within that first five minutes of your conversation, no matter how great that content is. And I think going into it ahead of time, it's making sure that they know it's recorded and how easy it is to gain access to it afterwards because then they'll actually be engaged in the conversation of what you're presenting for your content versus taking notes or screenshots if, if they're on that level. So those are just some things that we've seen as tips for us. And if there's a platform you really enjoy using, even Instagram and Instagram stories, 
start off there and see what you can do differently to start with engagement in your content first and then build that up into other platforms that might require more time on your side and more interaction with your audience. Beautiful. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap this session up and I want to finish with one, you know, top tip from each of you around what you would do in relation to course creation. Uh, if you can email through to the team and myself, your social media links will include those in the replay. Um, I'm loving the comments about CDs and DVDs. I just literally put a, a set of cassettes, like proper cassettes, old school cassettes in a garage sale on the weekend of, of online learning and education. So that dates um some of the time that we are there and uh, guys the one thing i want to touch base with in relation to the tech situation of yes we understand that the you know not everyone is coming from the same backgrounds in the same areas but the technology and the software that we have spoken to you about today is the simplest in lots of ways in you in being able to get that that there i don't think we can do much more than say give you the opportunities in the software there i cannot we cannot make it easier than the platforms we have brought to you today in all honesty um that is what 10 years of being in this online business has taught me is that these guys know their stuff and they know their technology and they know how to do things um i can't always give you the answer that you know yes they're going to be able to click on that link for those of you who want to talk about the technology and those sorts of things, if you want to look in even in the media connections area, we have an onboarding course via Thinkific, which teaches people through everything through the process. Okay, from how to submit your release, the framework of writing a press release, how to write a release, and that's an online onboarding process. And I'll be, I'm, tomorrow most probably knows, but one of the tools we talk about in Thinkific regularly is that later do the same thing with their Instagram programming. They have an onboarding course which says how do you do it um so that's all good um okay so what i want to do now is one top tip one thing you, one top tip and one thing you wouldn't do in taking your business online and teaching others virtually and one um you know key takeaway from each of you if we possibly can and we'll start with hanny because he's on that side and i can work my way around all right yeah my tip uh more about just building trust with your audience and to do that just put out valuable content on social. Just get out, put yourself out there on social. You have a course, you want to sell it, but people don't know who you are. People don't trust you, don't know that you're knowledgeable. Share, share out on social, go live, upload videos, whatever you need to do, get yourself out there so that people know and trust you before they could, you know, ask, before you ask for any money, basically. That would be my top tip. Just build that trust with your like audience. Yeah. Hi, Ma. Unmute. Okay. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that people are, are concerned about is the is keeping it simple, making sure that it's easy for their audience. One thing that's in your total control is your communication with your audience. Uh, the software could be as simple as possible, but sometimes we get in our way and we overcomplicate our messaging. So and when we send a message out to people to say, hey, come to my webinar, come to my course, come to my session, we have a billion calls to action and follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook and don't forget to do this. And there's like a million things and the email is a story. So one of the things we recommend to people is to have one call to action for each email, each message. Just focus on that. The shorter the email, the more comprehensive it is, the easier it is for them to follow. It's like, hey, I'm doing a webinar. Here's the time of the day. Here's a link. Uh, come with your questions. And then you have more to say. I know we want to share so much more. Send another email in a couple of days. You know, just keeping it focused, allow them to be, find the link easy and find it uh, much easier to, uh, to consume what you're offering. Rob. Am I the only Rob left? Yeah. Other Rob, <laughs> other Rob had to go deal with children. The joys of working um, from home. <laughs> so uh, uh, one tip that, that I have, uh, especially when people are thinking about, obviously, online summits and looking at, like, how many speakers and who, who to recruit, um, there's this temptation that you need to go big and you need to just get at everyone. You need to recruit any, any type of speaker um, and, uh, and then provide as much value as you, as you want. And you, what you end up doing is you have, you know, a very broad set that doesn't go very deep. Um, so uh, one tip that I, I have is um, always go back to your customer persona and let your customer persona dictate all of your actions. Um, and uh, whether that's uh, coming up, uh, deciding what type of talks you're going to be uh, uh, offering or what kind of tracks you're going to be designing um, to evaluating whether or not you're going to pick a specific person 
to be your speaker, uh, going back to your customer persona and using that as the test uh, with all of your actions allows you to really focus on the value. Uh, and then the takeaway that, that I, think, I think everybody probably would, would, um, would agree with is if you focus on, on the value that you're trying to impart, not, the, not necessarily being flashy with the experience, if you just focus on the value and the most efficient way to get that value to your, your customer, your attendee, um, you're going to deliver something that's memorable. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be the, the you know, bee's knees in terms of visually appealing. We've all turned into bubbleheads. We're all just nodding. <laughs> that's a good moment in time. Now, do, now, I have to actually add into don't, don't take every summit. When we ran the first small business skills summit, now Joya will, will back me up on this, Clive will back me up on this. I created way more work for myself than I ever should have. We had 200 people from the community apply. I rattled that down to 60. And we delivered with 60 presenters over 14 days. Still, still, it, 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 60 people over 14 days would probably still be very valuable. It's more just like as long as, there's a reason for each of those 60 people and fantastic. There, there yeah. was, and it was hard to cut down, but would I do it that big again? No, it was too much work for us to deliver. Um, and make sure that when you are, and this is a, a big thing, of when you're choosing your speakers, that your speakers are actually prepared to do a little bit of promotion for you if you're going to do something like that. That was the one big lesson learned. Absolutely. But Doyle went live with me. <laughs> Setting expectations, live. that's that, 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 that's a really common thing as well. So like, you know, if I was inviting you to, to be a speaker, Linda, I, I might then stop after you say, yes, I'll be a speaker. Whereas it actually should be a two-way street. And, you know, I, I should be interested in understanding how it, how you're yeah. going to be promoting, how you're going to be getting stuff out there. And so, especially first time summit. Uh, I was organizer. involved in your very first summit with Ben. Yes. I uh, sometimes there. they forget to do that. <laughs> Doyle, your top um, tips. Yeah. Um, build a strong foundation. And a lot of times that starts with understanding what your strategy is. Um, the, the tools you have, as you've seen, they're, they're amazing. You've got them all there, but build that foundation. Think of it as building your, your house, your office, your building, whatever the case may be. Um, if you don't have that, it's going to start creaking in a little bit. So spend some time up front. I'm not saying a lot of times, but identify, you know, your, your strategy, your underlying sort of um, foundation that you're going to be working with. And then you can fill in these pieces, fill in these gaps. What platform do I need for what to deliver? What value to whom? And that's really important going forward. And I'm just going to parrot what everyone else says. Um, I mean, I, I think, yeah, like bringing value to your audience is the, the key thing. I think um, bringing ba that value to where your audience is and where they're going to be so if they are on youtube then you know that that's great if they're on facebook like linda link like that makes sense if they are likely and you can bring them into a, a webinar and that interactivity is is valuable to them that's where you should um do it but yeah don't try and spread yourself too thin and do everything everywhere you know find your audience and where you can bring the most value to it and just that's where you should be focusing on you know, the tech fantastic all these other guys have got that handled you don't have to think about it you just pick one go with it it'll work um as long as it's not just some like numpty thing that no one else is using it's going to be good um no offense guys but it means you're all doing a really great job and then you can focus on what you do best um and like just think of your audience and what you can bring to them <laughs> clive because you've been in this world because we forced you into it this year Indeed. Um, I'll take less time than everybody else. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Good point. And Clyde, you've got to admit, you are having fun in the strategy circle, aren't you? Oh, always great fun to talk to people who actually listen. <laughs> Eva says, don't be so but excited, maybe, Clive. <laughs> but maybe they're listening because I'm providing them with really good stuff. <laughs> Tamara, what's your top tip? My top tip is to not be afraid to ask your audience, um, to ask them which channels work best for them, to ask them, will this content make sense? Will this make sense as a course? And, and like being okay to do a little bit of that market research and almost co-create with them so that you know that you're providing that value that they need. Very much so. 
Michelle. Yeah, on my side, it would be actionable content. You want to keep them engaged. You want to make sure they're going to get real results. So what can they come away with immediately from this? What's going to set you apart from your competitors on this topic? It's not just the top five things. It's like, what can you immediately do? I think you've showcased that today of all the tools and resources that everyone can come back with. So it's having that content that they can take away immediately afterwards, I think is a, a very good value proposition. Very much so. Dan? So yeah, uh, exactly what everyone else has said. <laughs> I, I think what I would add to that is uh, in marketing world, a lot of people, they talk about no like, and trust. So, you know, you need to know someone and you get to like them. You have to know and like them in order to trust them. And then you need to do all three in order to have them basically buy from you. I've actually come to believe over the years that that's an overcomplication that you don't necessarily need, especially in, in the, the oversaturated market that we're living in, especially with video taking off even more this year than it will do, or sorry, that was otherwise going to. It's just accelerated things with the whole Corona thing. Yeah. So I, I definitely believe that if people can trust you, the other two can follow. So if you focus on trust first, then it doesn't necessarily matter whether they know you or they like you. If they trust that you can actually solve their problem, then that's literally all you need. Um, and a lot of time people actually gain trust through just a, a feeling they get from you. Like if you're naturally charismatic and if you're not naturally charismatic, a lot of people use that as a, a blocker, like a, you know, I'm not charismatic, therefore I, I'm not going to bother doing this thing. But charisma is something you can learn easily. You know, it's, it's very, very simple. So I would definitely focus there and focus on trust. And then everything else everyone else suggested, it, it follows on and just reinforces that. Very much so. Guys, my top tips are spend some time actually putting your, your plan together and knowing what you have. Um, use, the, use the Trello board that we shared with you today that technically is normally part of the course creator circle, but we went, you can just have it. Uh, get in there and use that Trello board. Don't overcomplicate the process and, and get out of, and get, yeah, Uber, you're going to appreciate this because I keep saying this all the time. Get out of your own way and keep the message to, to the online message that you want to talk to. And I, don't, I know there's others of my students here and I'm sorry, I sound like I'm picking on Uber, but it's because he keeps popping up in my chat box and I can see him. Um, but bear in mind, get out of your own way, deliver it for your students. And if you don't deliver this content online, there is only one person you are letting down and it's not you. It's the audience and it's the potential students from down the track. So make sure that you're sharing your message and you are going to fall on your face from time to time. You know, you're going to fall on your face, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to miss an edit, you're going to miss all that sort of stuff and it's going to happen. And you're going to have not Facebook's not live, not go live. And it just happens. But we all have been there, done that, and picked ourselves up from it. So I would like to thank our panel for joining us. I would like to thank Clive for being thrown into being my tech support person today, <laughs> which is different. But all of my team have got people in isolation, which meant uh, they weren't as able to be here in a quiet environment. But Charlotte's still at school for us, so that is really good. Uh, great. <laughs> Um, yeah, four, seven times, pick yourself up, eight, Dan, you're very right. Guys, thank you all for joining us. I would like to just w get us all to wave on screen and hopefully we can create a screenshot of that later, <laughs> you know, for the social media proof that we're all here. Um, and I want to thank you everyone from there. Um, there. Uh, Jenna didn't get the Trello board. It's all in that tools list that I popped in. At the end of this re the end of the session, we will go into replay mode. I will edit it. I will hopefully put a nice logo sting on the bend back and forth of it because, you know, I like them to be pretty. You will get the replays. If our presenters can send me the social media links, we'll put them all in as well. Feel free to join us inside BBB. For those of you who missed the live stream on BBB, um, with this, going, this panel going live, the, we, we will have it up in the group and up on all of our channels, including YouTube, very, very shortly. <laughs> Thanks once again. I appreciate for everyone taking the time out to join us. Um, and please check out these people's businesses, check out the offers that they've had, um, and make sure that you, you know you support these guys as much as you support us in the community moving forward. Bye, everyone. <laughs>